What up? What up? Sunday, February 20th, episode three, Power Book Four, the Tommy Egan spinoff. We are in here. What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's had a lovely, lovely holiday weekend. I guess you would call it a holiday. What is it? President's Day weekend? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the federal holidays are anymore. Every day is a holiday. <laughs> what y'all think so far about the show? I'm seeing mixed reviews. I'm seeing mixed reviews, but I'm rocking with it. What's going on, Monica? How you doing? Double back was good. Linda, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts. Y'all we in here early, so you know what I'm saying give me a rating of what you think the episode was so far. Episode three, scale of one to uh, we're gonna do it on a scale of one to ten. Yeah, one to ten. Let me know what you guys think of this episode we just had tonight we got watermelon lemonade what's going on kim i see kim in here all the time rita rita how's it going ot said a number seven got a seven Mm, i give it a seven you got to understand we're still early in the season so we're getting to to the build up right now we haven't even made it to, to the halfway point yet so yeah it's definitely building up right now double back a seven so we averaging out about a seven yeah i say a seven seven and a half i like the things that we were seeing in it too like we're starting to see the the character development and seeing where everybody's about to go so once we get into about episode five six you're going to really see what sides everybody's on we're going to start to see janard's um his his agenda what he actually got going on with his brother we're going to see if Claudia can actually make this work. So five and six is where we're going to start getting into the meat and the potatoes. And then seven is where all the action. Seven and eight is going to be so much action. Going to get a little bit in nine. And then, you know, ten would be the cliffhanger for season two. G for life said, I love it. It's a ten. So let me see. Well, we got one, two, three, four. That's 28. 38 divided by what well, we got five people. Right now. Mm-hmm. Right around a seven and a half almost. Cool. It ain't bad. I may have did that math a little wrong, y'all. <laughs> OT, what you mean he's sus? Like sus as far as you can't trust him, or I mean, we know he came out the closet. So I mean, when you when you in debt hundred and ninety six thousand dollars two hundred and three, oh yeah, you're gonna be a little sus. That damn wallet. I go over there to my wallet right now. <laughs> it's way less than $196,000, but let me tell you this. It's not on the zero. It's above the zero. His money is below it. What's good, Dre? What's good? I like the scene when Tommy went and talked to Polly and Walker. Yeah, that you know, saying that gives you that little mob type feel. But you know how we do it on our lives. There's no particular order. We decide who we talk about. You know, I might go on a rant or two about a few things that I've seen. I got something for Gloria today also because that scene with her and Vic, I kind of looked at it and was wondering, eh. and it's got us looking at Gloria a little side eye. I'm hearing a lot of people say she may be undercover. She may be undercover. Now, I wouldn't put that against her because that would be a good, you know what I'm saying, that would be somebody good to plant in there. But my only thing is we already have a crooked cop with Bennigan, and then we got introduced to new Two new police officers. I didn't look up what their names are. Matter of fact, that might be something I do look up first. Rita said, um, Gloria snitch. That that would be interesting. I want to know what exactly she has going on. One minute you're looking at it. Okay, she could just be a chick that's running the, the doctor bar or whatever the hell it's called. Or she could be undercover cop, but she used to deal with Vic. And, you know, technically undercovers ain't supposed to be sleeping with anybody out on these streets. But then again, Gloria could be like our girl Carrie. And she just likes sex. <laughs> Who you think the feds or cops watching? Um, Well, we heard from Walter. The feds aren't watching him per se right now. Of course, what they got the alderman. He's supposed to be the one helping them out. So I don't know if the feds are watching. It might just be the local Chicago PD. I mean, like I said, I didn't see who those uh, those two officers were. That would be something I'd like to look at first. So let me go. Matter of fact, we'll do that. 
We're going to look up the cast, and we're going to see if they have any information on them. Because if they do, I want to know if they are actual feds or are they just Chicago PD? What would it be, Gloria? Let me see. Power Book 4 cast. Hopefully to give us something. Well, we know Ben again, his ass crooked. We could tell by his hairline. Like me, I ain't got no haircut this week. So y'all, y'all see me with the scully on or a hat. That's when you know I ain't got no haircut. But he ain't have no shame. He went straight to the barber shop, turned down a free haircut, turned down a free haircut, and he needed one. I wish I would go in a barber shop and they say, Oh, yeah, I can get you one next week for free. I'm gonna be back. I spend I spend sixty for a line, the beard. Oh no, no, man, I don't do all that. Look at Mecca. What's up, Anna? How's it going? Donna said Vic doesn't seem like a bad guy. No, he doesn't. He just you know saying caught up in the life. Uh, let me see. I need the pictures, man. I can't just go off of names. I don't be knowing nobody is. Holly, Simon, Reggie. Mm, I don't know. We got, oh, his name is Liam McGuire. I thought they said Macintosh or something like that. Orderly 2, Bar Girl, Special Agent Vargas. Uh, let's see. Is Brian Keys? Special Agent. So, Whoever's in the police field, let me know what a special agent is. Is that a police officer or is that feds? Special agent uh, Edgar Vargas. That means he might be in the feds. He might be in the feds. Special agent uh, Rona, Ronina, Kayla. I'm just going to call her special agent, special agent Kayla. So, okay. We got two special agents. They were the ones watching Tommy in the whip. All right, so now we know they not police officers, they special agents. That works. So maybe y'all think the feds are after they watching after Diamond or are they going after uh because Walter said they wasn't on him. So what you guys think? They're after CBI and Diamond. That's very, very interesting. And on top of that. Did Tommy notice that when he looked in the rear view? I mean, in the side mirror. Specialist feds. All right. So I don't know. Y'all seen when Tommy looked in the side mirror? So does this mean the feds? Well, I mean, of course, Tommy's he's in it now. He got taken in that picture. And you would think anytime you meeting up to move. If you're doing any kind of drug exchange, you're supposed to make sure you're aware of all your surroundings. You're not going to have a meeting with the Flynn family and the head of CBI in a regular bar and then just walk out the front and just talk to them out in daylight. That right there was Tommy slipping. The feds are on the Flynn's. They're internationally connected. Um, Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to go a little more and see a little more. Because like I said, Walter told them at the original meeting, the feds wasn't, they weren't building a case or anything on them. But that could just be him thinking about the Chicago PD with Ben again and, the, the, uh, and Liam. But the feds, shoot, they here now. And I said, Tommy definitely noticed them. That's what I'm thinking when he, you know what I'm saying, when he looked in there. Look at him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to move when the eyes is on you. The feds taking pictures of Tommy going to be an issue since he's supposed to be dead. That's true. But if he's supposed to be dead, I don't know if Tommy, because Tommy showed his license of registration for the car. So it may be under a different name. So if they do look him up, we just seen that he could probably potentially get out of it. So as of right now, you're just looking at it as a random white guy. He came out the car, I mean, the bar into a Mustang. Oh, he must just be a driver or something. <laughs> must be a driver or something. So we got two special agents and we got crooked ass Bennigan. Like I said, man, Bennigan, we all knew he was up to no good from the get go. We didn't even have to second guess that. 
Now, I thought he may have been, you know, every show they got to have a crooked cop, but you also got to have one person on the show that overdoes their job. Like, you working too hard, man. You ain't getting no overtime dollars either. It's the middle of the night. Vic calling you up, man. I need help bailing out the dogs. Man, I can't help you there, bro. <laughs> it wasn't me that locked him up. Yeah, so Alderman, he did mention that, and he was telling Claudia, you know, you could go to somebody else, but you'd be starting fresh. So I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna get a lot more of a, a lot more details, a lot more, a lot of details of what's going on, and that that'll start filling it in. But like I said, we only in episode three, so we can't really get too much. They're not gonna just spill everything out for us this early in the season. We gotta stick around at least. <laughs> she said uh Bennigan's hairline is still in shambles well you got to remember this has only been like two days he said next week they'll be open I know he ain't in regs he coming to work every day his damn captain looking at him like damn it Bennigan come on man do something do something uh what's the timeline after he tried to kill Tasha at the power six uh if it's continuously because you got to remember Right after he tried to get rid of Tasha, Ghost died. They did everything. And Tariq went to school that same year. He enrolled in school that same year. So this shouldn't be no more than maybe a, let's just say it's, I think this is supposed to be running concurrent with the, you know, saying with what happened at the end where he talked to Monet. So right after that, this is where this picked up. So it's running at the same time as uh, season two. What up, Xavier? What up? What up? Oh, call me a goat, baby goat, right now. I ain't you know what I'm saying? We ain't we ain't making too much noise yet. We'll be the big goat in a minute. But Bennigan, the thing about him is he does he really have that much power? He's just a little sheriff. I mean, he ain't over the police department. It's not like he can go up there, hey man, don't arrest these people, don't do this. I mean, you could stop maybe a traffic stop or something, but once they get booked, there's nothing he can do, like he was telling Vic. Went in there. That lady took that five hundred dollars. I would have told him, "Look, you make it an easy, <laughs> an even stack. I get him out right now. I'll personally go back there and get him for you. You make it an even stack. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you make it. Matter of fact, you give me fifteen hundred up right now. Every time they come in, I, I just let them out." I just let him out. 1500 right now, and then you get me. I know you're paying Bennigan. I seen that stack you just threw in Bennigan's car. You give me at least. I ain't even, you know what? I ain't even going to be greedy. You give me 3500 a month. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> True, Iceman. He did say it's above his pay grade. Like, hey, man, ain't nothing I can do. Hell, he wasn't even allowed in the police station. He's sitting outside in the dark. <laughs> they don't even let him park in the parking lot. Simon getting whooped on and arrested. Look at Ben again. He's sitting out here, this big ass badge out here. That's when you know somebody's soft. They got to show off that badge all the time. Man, don't mess with me, man. I'm police. Like, all right, Ben again. You see, you see, Jannar got in that ring with Diamond. He talking about I let Diamond win. No, you didn't. We watch you get whooped on. Ben again is crooked like Ray Ray. Um, Ray Ray wasn't crooked. Ray Ray was just a, pardon my French, a dirty nigga. <laughs> Ray Ray was just in the streets. <laughs> at least, at least Bennigan worked his way up to be some. Ray Ray was just a street cop, just doing what he could to get by, hanging out with Tariq. Come on, man. Hey, the streets need a body. Da, 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 the streets need a body. Whatever happened to that kid, famous? They ain't shot him yet. That Benning is not gonna make it. Mm, nah, I think they might have to get rid of it. I think it might be Tommy. And when you really think about this episode, they gave us an hour, but it was really, it was really kind of small. Like I can just name all the, the spots. We got this, the brothers fighting, the meeting, him with uh 
Liana. Yeah, it's a real quick episode. It's a real quick episode. But they had Liliana come in there and just the underwear. I said, okay, I see what we doing here, power. Tommy about to just knock things down. But she said she doesn't do white dudes. But she told Polly, if you cut that mustache off, she throw that monkey. Let me show y'all something right here. This, 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 this sugar they got, they about to finesse whoever the hell they sell it to on the streets. They ain't, they ain't cutting it with regular stuff like <laughs> baking soda or anything. These foods got sugar. They trying to make that thing that sweet spot. Talking about when you hit that thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, okay, Tom, you got that special recipe. <laughs> Diamond's brother works my nerd man. Janar, I want to know what his plan is. We're gonna talk about that too. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this Tommy and Liliana uh plan that they got going on. Do you know what I'm saying? They out here trying to make it happen. Xavier said the feds is watching Tommy now. Well, I won't say that they're watching Tommy yet. Right now, they're just wondering who is this random white guy. You know what I'm saying? They want to know who is he because he just showed up in the pictures. So I'm assuming they were there either watching the Flins or Diamond in the CBI. But, you know, it's just, OK, now we got a We got a picture of this white boy. Put this up on the wall. You got to put that question mark on it. Diamond's going to have to kill his brother or he's going to get him killed. He want that spot. I, I never understood that, man. Like, that's my brother. Of course, I'm the oldest. Well, I mean, my older brother. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if if it was something and, and I was in charge, he'd be like, all right, cool with it. If it's my brother, he in charge, all right, cool with it. You know what I'm saying? We all getting money. I'm not going to turn on my brother. If we got to fight for this number one spot. Hey, like, man, I ain't fighting for shit. This dude, Tommy, saved your life, man. And he got 10 of them things. He got 10 of them things. I want to know whose bricks uh, she got. Tommy said the brick is like 30 grand. Listen, what did I tell y'all last week? I said they about 30 to 50. Y'all like, man, they ain't going for that much. Oh, yeah, they are. Especially these are... uh, this is on the low end because these are stolen bricks. We don't even know who they came from. Now, if you're getting them on consignment, yeah, you can. they'll fund them to you for a little bit lower. But this is 10 random ones. We don't have a re right now. So they just trying to sell these for 30 to get them up off the street. I'm talking about a quick 300000 when in reality, you can break these things down and move them, 10 of them for 500 especially in Chicago. When we heard that the whole city is dry, there's only the Flins and then CBI. Everybody else is just random. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But hey, who am I? Just a kid from Kansas City that knows a little bit about the game. <laughs> I don't know much, people. I like Gloria more from Tommy. Yeah, Gloria, she's straight, but really, right now, everyone, we're kind of torn. We don't know. Is she really for Tommy or she just out here trying to make some connects to turn some people in. Maybe she knows the special agents that were out in that car. We don't know yet. I do like her, though. Real good looking, too. <laughs> Walter will take a hit, have a heart attack, and die. Yeah, I could see. I don't think they get rid of Walter to maybe episode seven, you know, Keep them around a little bit. Even if you held them on till season, you could hold them on to season two and just have them like terminally ill, have them in the bed or something. And Vic has to step up with the guidance of Polly. And then they go off and do some things on the side deal, which we already see formulating with Claudia and uh, Tommy. So that, that'd be interesting. See how the organization runs with, with Vic in charge and um, Walter out a little bit. Yeah, the, sp- uh, the Spider logo, if you remember in the, the original one, the cartel had that logo. And this could potentially be theirs. And that's why Tommy's holding on to it. Because with the, the Jimenez, Jimenez uh, cartel, that was theirs. They had the Spider on it. And you would see that. They lead the card around and stuff. So 
maybe she stole them from them and that's why she's not telling tommy exactly where she got them from because she knows how big they are what trouble they could get in and tommy over here come on man look at this ain't no way tommy in the game and he's scared to just cut into this look we breaking it down it don't matter how you cut it open you just got to get it open and into the bowl so you can start mixing it he over here mm -hmm. We're all black on knowing damn well this powder get on you. You don't want to be walking around that residue. You gotta have gloves on. And if Liliana's gonna do it like that, she need to go ahead and do it like how Nino Brown told him to do it. Take everything off. <laughs> Look at Iceman. <laughs> She's thick. <laughs> yeah, when she came out, she surprised me, man. She surprised me. Okay, Shot Girl says she just finished the episode. She's from Chicago. I'm glad they're not shying away from the racism. Yeah, man. You know, a lot of them can't tell the difference between BLM and BET. And we just had our little spill about BET+. Plus. <laughs> Brillo, what's good, my boy? What's good? Everything all right over there? I seen, I seen Brillo putting out some content over there. I'm liking what you're doing with your, um, where you're taking your moments and you're labeling each person. When the screen come up. Hey, if it's cool, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring up one of your um, one of your videos later on tonight because I like what you're doing with that. Matter of fact, I I'm gonna go find that thing. You out here on the West Coast? What part? Are you in Northern Cali or Southern? Yeah, Miles. He was he was focused on the on the the card here and at the end. So you remember when he was on the roof, he looked at the card, and he was looking at it real closely, and he put it in his pocket. So this is either the cartels either gonna come out here, or I don't know. I don't I'm I I don't know what they could do with that, but it has to be something significant if they keep bringing it up. So you're definitely right about that, Miles. Oh, Brillo, you out in Vegas. Okay, you're a little ways away from me. She was still out here, man. So much better than being. See, I'm from Kansas City, and I don't. I ain't lived in Kansas City since I was what 24, 25. So like 2009 or something. I got up out of there. I couldn't do the snow and none of that no more. But yeah, definitely. So, so with Tommy and Liliana, man, that's just too much. I'm just gonna call it Lily. Saying Liliana is just too much for me. But back at the house, they talking, they talking, and they getting, they getting to work. And I already explained to y'all, and y'all, I'm pretty sure a, a lot of us, we're smart enough to know if somebody got that thing to your face, you, you nine times out of ten, you're gonna agree with them. You know, when he done busted her head open in the kitchen, you're gonna agree with that person that got the gun. You know what I'm saying? So that's what a reasonable, you know, some people they, I'm gonna die by mine. Not me. I got too much to live for. So whatever you need, I'm going to come up off. Of Y'all call me Saul. Call me what you want. But a nigga trying to see tomorrow. <laughs> so we got Liliana. We got them cooking it up. Now you remember, she just sitting at the house talking about this is boring. What do you mean this is boring? Tommy's fire station is 10 times better than that crack house you were living in. You might as well just be happy over here and Tommy chilling here and trying to kill you. All you got to do is just mix this stuff up. The faster you get it done, the faster we can get it up out of here. You can get your money. They talking about, yeah, let's test the product. Tommy talking about make it small. I got a lot to do today. What? <laughs> Man, you better have Liliana test that product. Walking around the city, <laughs> zooted. Yeah, Kim, it snowed. And look at Tommy. It's a it's a prediction, a light chance of snow. Mika wants to know um, what's going on between Lily and Claudia. They going to get involved? Well, they haven't had Lily and Claudia. They haven't really had too much of a close interaction. We know Claudia, she pulled Tommy over. They haven't even has correct me if I'm wrong. Has Lydia, I mean Lydia, Lillian, <laughs> Lily, 
and Claudia. I'm adding their names together. Has Lily and Claudia even met each other yet? Because I know she's seen Walter and Polly. Tommy ran into Claudia. I don't think they ran into each other. I don't think they know each other yet. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think Claudia and Lily ran into each other yet. Hey, I was thinking the same thing, shy girl, because Tony, he gave up quick. But what did I just tell y'all? When someone got that thing in your face, it's best you oblige. Your life is not worth it, especially for that crazy ass dude dancing around with no shirt on. Yeah, okay, good. So no, everyone's saying not yet. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking, I was like, man, I don't remember them meeting each other. I don't think that they're going to get involved. Um, She seems like she's really going to stick to the Asian girl that put her on the drugs. Will she do something with Tommy? They might kiss, but it might be on some he kisses. Well, let me not say he kisses her. That sounds bad. They kiss each other, and then she's like, that's as far as it goes. We can't do anything like that. Plus, I like girls. But, you know, it could be something like that. And... They ain't about to have Tommy running around just thrashing everything, man. Come on now. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Bradshaw. Claudia's new product is actually, it's a chemical compound that was a, um, it's a diet pill, but the, the chemical makeup of it is like one molecule away from being Coke. So they took that and, you know, you start mixing it up with stuff and then it'll give you that high and that rush. So it's almost similar to cocaine. It just doesn't have all the, you know, saying the last molecule to, to make it actual cocaine. So it's a diet pill. Thank you, Fatima. Yep. It's it's a basically, yeah, synthetic coke. Because they said it was a diet pill and the FDA approved it. But it was just one off from being actual coke. Well, I can't say it was one off from being actual coke because it wouldn't have been coke. It would have been similar to it but coke can only come from coke so i mean i'm just throwing it out there donna i don't think i don't think tommy and claudia are gonna mess around like i said the way she was low-key flirting with him but you know what if you paid attention she's doing exactly what her dad told her to do to the older man liam you remember he said wear something stimulate his mind and that's what she did she flirted with tommy to get him to think that it could potentially be something see so even though she ain't paying attention to her daddy and she resents him because he won't let her in the game she's paying attention to him and using that out in these streets um uh, hope as of right now we don't know if glory is a cop we don't know we we kind of ran through a little bit of scenarios i mean we're going to get on her but we ran through a little scenarios and maybe she's a cop. She's just working, you know, saying to see what the Flins are doing. And then maybe, you know, saying, but then again, she could just be a regular chick. I don't know. We we aren't too sure yet. But shoot, as soon as you said that, everybody's starting to say they don't really trust Gloria. I mean, yeah, Gloria. Hey, Donnell. Gloria needs to eat some of the food that she cooking. Oh, she making this soup. You ain't putting no weight on with that soup. <laughs> she over there. That's all she getting is that damn soup. Walking back and forth to the bar. Now, I paid attention. When, when they first got to the bar, she was actually in the bar. She walked out when Tommy came in. I always thought she just walked up at the end, but she was actually in the bar when Tommy first came in. All right, so we got them coming up with the plan. Tommy was asking uh, Lily, what is she? I mean, well, she was asking, what did he know about the Flins? He was just saying they were crazy. So we got to be able to move this work, though. And right now, we just moving it through the south side of Chicago. There ain't no money out here. It ain't no money out here. I mean, Tommy, he keeps looking at, he looking at this map like it's 1957. Talking about, man, I want the pipeline. This is where it come in at. Man, if you don't open up Google Maps on your phone and look at the map like that, he out here, okay, what's on this street? Well, whenever this map was produced, you know what I'm saying? This is just the streets and the intersection. It probably ain't got all the updated stuff on it. What's going on, Plays for Keep? What's going on, my brother? She thin, Miles. She thin, but mm, 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 
<laughs> R.I.P. to Carrie. Carrie's gone from my life. Miss Gloria, you know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's tough. Carrie just left me, but it's time for me to move on. And, and I'm thinking, me and Gloria, we got a future together. I'm thinking that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to move too fast, but, I mean, Carrie's gone. I ain't got much to look forward to except for coming home to Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on Santrice? you're not late man you're never late when you're in here with me my lives are not organized we just talk about whatever we go on little rants so that's the fun thing here whatever y'all want to talk about i'm with it you know what i'm saying do i think that diamond will have to kill his brother that only depends on what janar's actual plan is you know, when he was talking to Elijah, I let Diamond beat me up. So when we get on them, I go a little more in depth. But I don't think. From what it sounded like, it was just he was going to isolate his brother out where he takes control of it. I don't think it's going to get to the point where they may have to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? I don't I hope they don't put something in there where the black brothers got to kill each other like literal brothers. I hope they don't put that in there. But I mean, if it happens, it has to happen. I just prefer it to get to the point where they try to branch off. Say they branch off and Jannar, he gets most of the crew to come with him, CBI. And now Diamond partners up with Tommy and they become ultimately bigger. And, you know, Jannar got to go through them. But I hope they don't have them kill each other, man. Now, if Tommy has to kill Jannar, that's a different story. But I don't want to see the brothers kill each other, man, because I got a brother. And I don't think there's anything I could do to make me kill my brother. Matter of fact, I know there isn't anything that would make me kill my brother. Because if they kill Jannar, if they kill Jannar, then that means Mo got to come on as a cousin next season. So, hey, if y'all got to get rid of Jannar, so be it. <laughs> Just make sure that I get a, a decent character that ain't no snitch, a decent character that got a nice looking, uh, you know what I'm saying, whip. I'll be fine with that. I'll be fine with that. Oh, and let me be able to move some of that work, too. You know what I'm saying? Let me get some of that work. No, Jannar is not JP's son. Jannar and Diamond are brothers. JP's son is uh, D-Mac. He's the other guy with the dreads. The one that's always with... Uh, let me see if I got a picture of him. The, the guy that's with the dreads is always with Jannar. That's Elijah. That's not his nephew. So this is Elijah, the right-hand man of Diamond. I mean, uh, Jannar. But no, that's not, that's, this is not JP's son. It's the other kid with the dreads. It's a younger guy. Um, right now, Elijah's going to rock with, of course, he's going to rock with his mans, but I could see if they really split up, I could see him leaving Jannar and like, Hey man, you know what I'm saying? You my boy and everything, but I got to make some money. And he ended up rolling with diamond. I could see something like that happening, which will pretty much isolate Jannar, like what he was trying to do to diamond. No, Elijah is not JP's son. This is Elijah right here. JP's son is DMAC. We only we we seen him briefly in the first uh, episode. Let me see something. I don't know if y'all can see it, but yeah, this is. This is JP's son, D Mac. Of course, this thing gonna be lagging up. Yeah, so it's two different, it's two people with dreads that are in the shop, but damn. Let me see. This right here, this is D-Mac. This is uh, JP's son. Because if you watch, let me see. I think I got all of it. 
JP's in here talking about his son. Then you see the guy again right here, same bandana. And then he has the picture of him and his dad. Yeah, so this guy, D Mac, is his son. The other guy is uh, Elijah, is just Janar's boy. Because then I even looked up like his name and everything. And then when you go to his page, there you go again. So this is D Mac. This is JP's son, not Elijah. Yeah, Donnell, that's uh, that's Jeremiah. Elijah is Jerem. Well. Jeremiah is Elijah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Jeremiah, the birthday sex kid. And he on the uh the hook for the, the theme song. Money and power and power. I don't even know the words to that song. I ain't even try. Oh yeah, oh, Tommy in there. Oh, okay. Tommy is meeting with with Walter. Could shit this episode was shit. Well, I mean, every episode they can't just jump out. Episode one we got action. Episode two we got a little bit of action. Like you got to have one where you just trying to you know say give us the storyline. So this right here, all right, boom. Now next week we're gonna see them actually try to come together to make up for what Walter messed up in the meeting. You know what I'm saying? And then to pick back up five, six, seven, might have a stale moment like at eight, but then nine, you're going to be big. Ten goes into the cliffhanger. But, yeah, you can't just throw out everything like boom, 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 boom. Not in the first couple of episodes. Uh, who do I think is playing for um... – grandma's care in the home i really don't know i really don't know now when jp brought it up and he was saying we could ask kate and see that might be something there may be some money that teresi left and he made sure that the grandma was straight you never know how they like to tie in old stuff i don't know but Tommy held it down, though, at this meeting, didn't he? He said, good thing I ain't none of your people. Oh, man, look at that. I didn't even notice that during the episode. You know she a hitter. Got the Air Force One. She got them tied up tight, too. I'm talking about all ankle support. Ain't no slipping. Damn, what happened to you? You got caught slipping today? Hell no, I had them Air Forces on. I'm talking about tight as hell. <laughs> Ghost paid for grandma's nursing home. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Tommy confirmed that Ghost is dead. Now, he did lie to JP and say that my old business partner moved down south. So, mm -hmm. it could be Ghost. It could be, you know, Ghost wanted to make sure that he may have talked to Kate. And Kate was like, uh, could you help take care of my mom? Or, or we know Kate said, Kate said that Ghost left her some money. So, that could be the money that she's paying for the mom. You see what I'm saying? And then JP said we could call Kate and find out. Tommy said, no, she dead to me because he probably don't want to hear that. That something Ghost did for his mom is taking care of his grandma. That could be. That's interesting. That's interesting. Look, everybody looking at uh, Liliana talking about she got some cake. She surprised us this week, didn't she? She surprised us. She came in that kitchen ready to work, too. Ghost is a better man than me. Is a better man than me. I would have probably gave, since Kate helped raise me, I probably gave her like 50 bands. You know what I'm saying? Mm, who am I kidding? I probably gave her like 10, 20 bands. 10, 20 bands and then kept it moving. Made sure my kids are straight. Left my brother some money. Would I left Tasha some money? Nah. <laughs> I would have did the same thing. Give it to Tariq, my kids. But, you know, yeah. Yeah, because Tommy did leave. He left the um he left fingerprints on the bottle of rum out there when he blew up the car. He left his fingerprints on the lighter when he uh blew up the car. So I mean he did a lot of stuff, but 
the neighborhood it is and it to be some thugs like that they not they probably really not gonna even search like that who cares like who died out there <laughs> hey can we hit that like button give me eight more likes get up to 40 thank you thank you please thank you uh mouse she just laid low really when she got to chicago she took that money that julio gave her i don't know how much they gave her but i'm assuming ghost probably gave her mm, for her to leave but you gotta understand she's been hustling too she's been hustling if she got these bricks that means she's been selling something else too at least on a smaller scale but you laying low and you gotta look at that house that she was in the house she's in i'm not from chicago but I can assume that this place she got, hell, Tommy paid like 10, 20,000 for a firehouse cash. So this shit that she living in, man, she probably paid like $5,000 for this. This thing look abandoned. You got the refrigerator raggedy. You got these curtains from 1967. So you know that it ain't no money in here. The kitchen floor was so weak. Tommy with them weak ass boots stepped the hole in the floor. So she ain't got, it ain't no money in this house. Like, look at this place. It's a toolbox in here where the stove is supposed to be. Like, anybody from Chicago, tell me, tell me how much a place like this would cost to stay in. I won't even say you live here. You stay in here. This ain't no place you live in. You just stay here. It's like, I lay on the couch. We still in the internet and cable and electricity from the damn wire in the backyard. Look at this. Don't nobody have no damn wallpaper in their house. This is the same wood we had in our... So we used to have a garage in my old house where we grew up at. We didn't have no, uh, like, basement. We called this place the downstairs. It was five stairs that went down into, like, a little garage. We turned that into a room. And this is the kind of walls we had up. And this is in the 80s. So I know this is even before my time. Oh, yeah, 500, 700 a month. So what? 512... Two, five, one, oh, six thousand a year. Oh man, she ain't got no food. You seen it was just a damn beer in the refrigerator. So <laughs> that's why she was trying to take those five bricks and sell them on her own. Cause shoot, she could easily upgrade herself in this place. Definitely looks better than Kato's spot. Kato's, you walked in the front door, it's a damn washer and drying your face. You smelling draws, you smelling all kinds of crap. At least in here, it's presentable. Goddamn Kato's house had junk everywhere. Kato used to take her stinking self over to uh, B. Mickey's house and just go to sleep over there. I'm like, man, you got to take a shower, man. You can't just be hanging out over here. I seen where you live. Kato, a real cute girl, but golly, you can't be living in that filth. The Flynn's property, shoot, where they at? That thing probably about a three, four million dollar house. Not including the upgrades that my man Walter did. Hell, it might be more than that. Well, you got to think when Walter bought that, Walter been in the city for a while. So Walter probably bought that back when it was like 1.2 million and now it's worth four or five. What's going on Friday? It's Adamsville. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? Got my my family in here you know they come in to support all the time that's what i love about these lives that's what i love about these lives we over here doing real estate we looking at how much is she paying and how does she survive in chicago from coming from new york let's just say ghost gave her twenty thousand dollars leave the city start fresh you come here i seen a shy girl she's from chicago so we just gonna stick with her five hundred dollars so she knows like what these prices would probably go to five hundred dollars and shit just lay low a little bit because think about all she got to do is sell one of them bricks and she in the game now she got 10 unfortunately she got split with tommy now 50 50 so 150 000 minus our overhead so you're gonna probably profit you probably profit about 120 and that's if everything goes right that's if y'all you know saying don't get finesse you don't move something y'all lose some yeah, she could probably profit 120 off of this. So now she didn't turn that 20 bands into 120. Sheesh. She in the game. Or well, at least for now. <laughs> at least for now.
I mean, shoot. You put me in there, man. We're gonna make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. I don't even know. We oh, we were talking about the damn uh Flynn meetup. My boy Polly over there. See, I told y'all in the first episode, I respected Uncle Polly, man. He a businessman. He about his business, and he even trying to holler at Liliana. Mm-hmm. Put the Black Air Forces on. She got the Black Air Forces on. My boy Tommy, straight from New York City. You got the skinnies on, <laughs> the big-ass Tims on. Tommy, them ain't your size shoes, man. You got to go down to the size of them Tims. Them things too big. And you wearing them in Chicago. You, hey, you got to be able to run in Chicago. These young boys get out here shooting. Do you do you Claudia or Vic gonna do a Tariq on their daddy? Um Monica, so with them, how I'm seeing it going, I always had suspicion about Claudia, and I'm thinking Walter being sick, he may step down and she's gonna step up as the head. Even and it's gonna prove her dad wrong that a girl can do the job, and she's the one that has the new the new drug that they're trying to put out. So she's actually pulling the strings. Her working with Tommy is different. Her working with Tommy is, this is what I got. This is what you got. Her working, I mean, not her, but uh, Vic working with Tommy is more of a, this is Tommy. Hey, yeah, you got this, but let's do it my way. That's why we seen when they went over there and they got, they stole everything from the dude. Vic didn't know what to do. Tommy's handing him a pillow. He's trying to calm the situation down. So, I can see Walter becoming sick and then them starting to move drugs. They'll already be moving drugs behind the scenes. We're going to see that coming in episode four just because we already seen them do the setup here. So they'll start working with Tommy behind the scenes. I'm thinking Walter gets sick. And now what they're going to do is scale up and bring the drugs up to the level of the Flynn to start doing it that way. He said, why are knees like that? Man, she got that. <laughs> I, the mug be kicked back like, stand up straight. You might need to lean against this rail. They caught them size so Bob, Tim. Yeah, them Tim's big. I had like one pair of Tim's in my life. And I said, man, you know what? I can't get jiggy with this. Like, we, I mean, we wore Tim's in Kansas City, but not like that. It wasn't like an, an everyday attire. Don't matter what you wear up there in New York. Hell, man, it was just a dude. Man, let me get back to them damn Tims. Speaking of Tims, it was a, a nigga in the dunk contest last night with some Tims on. I'm like, man, what the? Y'all taking this Tim stuff a little bit too far. I thought on 2K, they were like, man, niggas hooping in Tims. I'm like, y'all for real? <laughs> y'all for real? But Walter definitely didn't like he didn't like how Tommy was talking to him. That's why Tommy told him. That's why I ain't one of your people. And I don't remember. I don't remember that cut being a ching or like ching ching. That thing was just a. Well, I guess if you go around like that, it ain't gonna just cut through skin. You know what I'm saying? Like how you think it is. <laughs> Dre said, "I'm from New York and I don't wear." A, yeah, man. Them, I was like, man, what the hell is this? Dunking in some Tims. I went to a poor school. Don't you have no boots on that damn... Hey, get them boots off that gym floor, off that wood. You know what I'm saying? Don't come in there with your cleats on and don't wear boots on that wood. He out there on the NBA floor in some Tims. If I'm the referee, get them out of here. No Tims. But shout out to everybody that wear them Tims, though, man. Somebody keeping them fools in business. And it ain't me. It ain't me. We're going to go to the, the meeting, and then we'll go back and we'll talk about Jannar and Diamond. But it was interesting to hear the backstory of why they don't work with each other. Now, I mean, we already know why it's don't really work with blacks anyway. But to hear that. They thought that it was CBI that ran up on Polly and his wife. That was interesting to hear that. 
I was not expecting to hear something like that. Where is it at? Oh. See, we can't even get there because there's so many little things where Walter was talking bad to Vic. Talking bad to him because he don't want to change it up. Oh, first last, you you fancy. Ain't that what Beyonce had on them knee-high Tims? <laughs> <laughs> knee-high Tim. That's just too much lacing up. You got to do all that. You bent over. T- Damn, I got to relace these things. Man, the hell with all that. I'm lazy. Hey, shout out to Sharice Bolton. This is my older sister right here, man. This is my older sister here. She want to put on a glamour shot for the damn profile picture. But yeah, shout out to Sharice Bolton. This is my blood sister here. You know what I'm saying? If if we had a family, our dad would be Walter. She would be Claudia. And I would be Vic. The only thing is, I'm a little bit smarter than Sharice. <laughs> I'm a little bit smarter than Sharice, so I'd be the leader. I'd be the leader. I got to tone down my cursing and stuff now. You know, she's a she's a lady of the Lord. She a lady of the Lord. I gotta. <laughs> what up, Sean? Hey, Sharice, you see this? Sean King said, "Hey, Mo, I'm your biggest fan." You see that? That's real love right there. Thank you, Shine. My sister ain't never said she was a fan of mine. Dang. That's real love. That that brings a tear to my face. Oh, my gosh. I just feel the love in the air. Thank you, Shine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll let you have that one because it's your show. Why, thank you. Make sure you watch Bel Air, uh, Sharice, and come in on Friday night. Hey, yo, yo, yo. I may be the little brother, but I'm tall little Sharice. You know what I'm saying? She got me by she got me by a couple of years, but we just dust those years off. Because once we t- after you turn 18, it don't matter how old we are, we the same. I thought about doing, you know, I'm I'm trying to do a lot of uh, a lot of more. I'm trying to do more things for my channel. Like I said, I'm starting up a Patreon so I can actually do these lives and we can have the audio, you know, so we don't have to just take slideshows and y'all can uh, watch me react to it in real time. So I mean, I still put my recaps on here, and I thought about putting all of my lives and putting them on the streaming services, but you know, I got to see what the the feedback is before I start, you know, saying branching out to do all these other things where I got to pay for things. And I'm not, you know, saying, cause at the end of the day, it is still a business. I can't, I'm not rich y'all. I'm not rich. I live a frugal lifestyle, but you know what I'm saying? It costs, it costs. So that's why I just stick to the YouTube. Cause it's free for everybody. You know, so I don't want to ask anybody for any money or anything. All donations, although all donations are deeply appreciated. I don't ask for them just a the like button. What up, big guy? What's going on? What's going on, brother? Uh, T2, you right. <clears throat> if Tommy <clears throat> if Tommy starts to dabble in those drugs again, you know, he, I won't say he's, who am I kidding? You right. When he get on those drugs, Tommy is on another level. You got to legit lock him in his place. You can't have him out in the streets like that. Tommy is unpredictable when he on those drugs and go see that. He used to go over there and discuss like, Tommy, what are you doing? He at the house in a tank top and his drawers talking about, man, I've been thinking ghost. No, Tommy, you don't need to be thinking about nothing. You need to be getting clean, brother. Go drink some water or something, some coffee. Oh yeah. Be more. We getting, we getting to the deal now. I was just, we were just doing the lead up to everything. So we about to talk about the deal now because damn, we already coming up on an hour. I told you we get on them rants. We were talking about damn Tim's and how much rent was in Chicago. <laughs> y'all be getting us on all the stuff. Well, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna blame y'all because when something pop in my head, I start talking about it. But yeah, so the deal that Tommy negotiated was a hell of a deal. A hell of a deal, especially for him. 
five percent on anything that they move five percent to not do nothing didn't do nothing and got five percent off of everything so that means they moved a brick for they moved a brick for 30 tommy made six bands sheesh sheesh and they split 10 percent to a piece oh man so that means 30 you get three thousand no, that'd be three percent, ten percent would be ten, twenty minus the six. Damn, so you got sixteen thousand out of that brick, so about fifteen, sixteen yourself, but you can just raise the prices. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's a good ass deal on all sides. It's just it's just how how can I explain this to you guys? It's just if you if if you're white. If you're a white person in here, please cover your ears real quick. It's just Walter don't fuck with Negroes. <laughs> he doesn't mess with Negroes. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. All right, everyone can open your ears now. <laughs> everyone can open your ears now. It's just Walter don't mess with Negro. That deal is, is great. It's opening up the North and the South to everybody. North and South to, to everybody. Y'all don't have any friction with nobody. Hey, we can move through the city. CBI Flynn family. We fly high. No lie. You know with CBI and Flynn. Yeah, we balling. We balling. Why Tommy's just at the house, arms crossed with Gloria. Like, why not take this deal? Now, Paulie didn't want to do the deal because he thought that it was diamond in the cbi crew that actually went up now he said his wife had a a face full of glass now i'm thinking a face full of glass like they sliced her up or you know what i'm saying like what did they do if they if, if they ran up on him and his wife she had a face of glass like what did they do hit her head in the window or something and she brought her head out and it was just glass sticking out of her head like what was going on here what was going on here? Paula, you a tough guy now. You wasn't acting tough when they was on you and your wife's ass. You ain't got no scars, but your wife got a face full of glass. Come on, tough guy. And I respect Paulie. I like Paulie. But come on, tough guy. You ain't that tough. I don't want to hear that tough guy talk. I don't want to hear that. When your wife got a face full of glass and you over here at the dinner table trying to make a man man oh man if it hey steven if paulie's wife has the same gas that liliana has paul you failed as a husband what were you doing you sat there and watched your wife get a face full of glass that's what you did that's what you did and then you went back to walter talking about what happened to your wife you remember on baby boy tyree says he went in there he got some alizé cuz he said, man, don't put no cup on my shit like I'm a drink in front of here. This nigga Tyrese got his ass whooped by some little niggas, got on his bike and rode that shit 10 blocks back to the house just to fall out. Nigga, if you rode that bike all the way up here, walk your ass in the house. Don't fall in the grass. You didn't fall when you was riding over here. Nah, because you were scared. Them little dudes on your ass. You ain't going to stop till you got to safety. And then you got here. Now you playing weak. That's what Polly did. Now Polly tough. You wasn't tough when they was out there on y'all. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. We know what's going on out there. Listen, I will tell y'all this. A mind full of scared is better than a mind full of lead. And that's exactly what Paulie was thinking. Paulie said, man, let me get the hell up out of here. These young black guys, they are not caring. My wife got a face full of glass. I'm not going to get a face full of glass, but we're going to get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Paulie made it home. Walter, it's a war going on outside. They called my wife. Hey, Gabby, I don't know. I don't know what this means. This seems look like some like some Texas chainsaw massacre. Let me know if if y'all understand what this is saying. Now, if she may be from a different country, I don't know. Hey, Modot. I really like your skin collar. 
I'm assuming color. It looks very nice. I can't wear to wait to wear your skin. Uh, I don't. I, 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 mm, I. Please, I don't want you to do anything to me. I don't want you to wear my skin. I, I like my skin on my stuff. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm just going to assume that it, it was typed wrong. I don't. Nah. I'm I'm good on sharing skin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sharice. You, <laughs> you be like, hey, what? Julius, what happened to you? I'm like, shit, somebody in the chat said they wanted to wear my skin. So now I got the damn, <laughs> I got the same cut Liliana got on my face. <laughs> oh, man. Taki Taki said that's a troll. Well, I mean, you know, you really can't troll me because let me tell you guys something. I got pride and you can't break my pride because I don't know none of y'all. And as long as none of y'all steal money from me or physically harm me, there's nothing you can do that control me or make me feel bad about anything I've done in life. So you guys control the way I personally don't care. I'm not big. You can't cancel me. I ain't got shit going on in life anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a retired man doing YouTube. So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But no, you cannot wear my skin. But, but hear me carefully for the low, low price of $599 a month. You can wear my skin. <laughs> and that goes for everybody. Oh, definitely, Donnell. When I I think the most we had in here doing power book power, yeah, power book two. I think we may have had like 800, 900 people in here. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely get some minds when we start going like that. But right now we have that, don't take it the wrong way, that intimate setting. I'm able to basically answer everybody's questions that pop up over here taki taki yes i look young but i've been retired for four years not like officially retired where people they send me a check monthly but i may you know saying some things happen to to do what i want to do in life and i live within my means you don't see me living over the top do I got some designer? Yeah, but I'm not about to rock all that. You know what I'm saying? I just spend on what I need, not on what I want. Because it's not how much money you make. And that's what I'm trying to tell Tommy. It's not how much money you make. It's what you do with the money you do make. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> she said, I got to ask for the $193,000. JP asked. Oh, man. So... We we pretty much know what's going on with this. It's some racism on the you know saying the older people side. Vic wants to do that. Let's get on JP broke ass. Let's get on JP. Every time we see JP, this nigga asking for money, but he don't want money. JP, what the hell is wrong with you? JP talking about man, yeah man, we got this bar man. Is it's taking a lot of money out of us. It's getting shot up every three months. Uh, so. Not I'm I'm not the smartest of man. Your bar is getting shot up. Okay. You got to replace these big ass windows. You got to replace all that cheap ass liquor. You got to get new tables. Sell this club. It ain't doing nothing but hurting your pockets. And you need $196,000. And you turning down. Tommy didn't brought over $20,000 last episode that he got that 25 from because he didn't get a whole 20 to him. He had to keep five for himself. Then he comes over and gives you another bank run. You're talking about, oh, Tommy, I can't take it. Well, if you ain't going to accept this money, don't complain to me about money. Kind of shit. I'm trying to help you out. You, my brother, I'm handing you a stack of cash. You're talking about, I can't take this money. You sure took that pizza. I brought that pizza in here. You didn't even say thank you. You opened that pizza up. That's the first thing we seen. Let me see something. He ain't, he ain't turned this pizza down. Talking about, I can't take this money. He opened up that pizza box so fast and he didn't even pick up a slice. He took one of the toppings off of the pizza. You don't take topping off the pizza until you put that pizza on your plate. Unless you're a parent. Now, if you're a parent and you got your kids and you done bought that pizza, you can do that. But if you a guest, I mean, of course, Tommy's the guest at the house. But if I brought that pizza, nigga, don't you take no toppings off my pizza. You put you some pizza on the plate. You know what I'm saying? Don't you take no, don't you take no toppings off. You know, you 
you know when you're tearing a piece apart and some of the top is on the other one and you look around because you know you're guilty like it's more on the other piece but you want to take it to put it on your plate that's what he just did you looking around I'm gonna take this off of this slice of pizza here and put it on mine yeah yeah <laughs> JP took that piece of quick as hell, didn't he? He in there starving his ass off. What you in here painting? Nate, you in here painting. Look, he got this painting outfit on. Tommy looking at him like, what are you painting? Paint this shit. That's what you need to paint. Get this off the wall. Why is this on the wall? We still got wallpaper up. What painting are we doing? What painting are we doing in this house? JP? Today is your day because I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And boy, when I tell you, when I look at you, I'm like, you a failure. You a failure, JP. You are a failure. What the hell are you doing? You ain't got no kids. You ain't seen your kid for 14 years. Your husband left you. What, what are you doing in life, JP? What, where did you go wrong? Someone take me back. I need the backstory on JP. I want to know where JP went wrong. Someone let me know where JP went wrong in life. Let me know where JP went wrong because, you know, some people say it could be because of this. Oh, he came out the closet. It ain't got nothing to do that. Why? JP came out the closet. Nigga still went on with his life. He got married again. So it ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with him coming out the closet. Where did JP go wrong? Where did JP go wrong? Someone let me know where JP went wrong. Let me know where JP someone someone give me a theory or something so I can go ahead and tell you. Nope, that ain't where JP went wrong. <laughs> Cause I, I need I need $196, people. $196. Tommy came to him in two days. Look at that stack. And he got that piece in that hand too. He got that piece in the hand. Tommy just came with another stack. Let's just say, let's just say it's another five, maybe five or ten. He came with twenty, thirty thousand dollars in two days. He told me I, I can't use it. Tommy said, "How much do you need?" One hundred and ninety-six thousand. Tommy said, "Damn, that's a lot of money." Well, we just gave you a third of it in two days. He told me I can't take it. Well, if you're not gonna take this, how the hell you think you gonna get? How how you gonna get one hundred ninety-six thousand dollars? I didn't turn. I, you didn't turn down thirty thousand dollars and came up with zero. Yeah, yeah, Stephen. He told him down to the exact dollar amount. That's when you know your ass is broke. That's how you know your, how much is your phone bill? You might be like, oh shit, shit, like $80. But when you broke, you know it's $80 and 27 cents because you got a damn factor in every single penny because you know your ass might not be able to eat tomorrow if you pay this whole thing. So it's like, all right, if I put down on that 196,000, my monthly payment, ooh, matter of fact, he in debt. So he need that 196 right now. So he's accumulating fees. Oh, oh, whew. that 30,000 would do wonders. That 30,000 would do wonders. This bankroll right here. Oh, you know what you do? You know what you do? That pizza, that pizza box that he brought. That pizza, you eat one roll tonight. You're going to have to save these two rolls for tomorrow. And then you can might eat that for dinner tomorrow night. But you're going to have to save. You're going to have to do something. Your ass owe $196,000. $196,000 dollars $196, on top of getting those windows fixed. On top of getting new tables and chairs. Yeah. The best thing for JP to do is get rid of that bar. Yeah, I know your dad owned it. It's in the family. Your daddy's sick. Nigga, you living in grandma's house. You're going to have to sell that club, bro. That bar is going to have to go. You owe $196,000. You might as well put that thing on the market. That bill alone will probably get you 500 Now, of course, the bank, they're going to be busting your head with them late fees. So sell that damn club for 400000 You take that 200000 either tear grandma's house down or reinvest it, put at least fifty in there, renovate it, get it to living conditions, and you can still have $150,000, $200,000. In that back pocket, that back pocket, you can live. But that's enough on JP. That's enough on JP. I'm not giving him a whole, I'm not giving him a whole, he don't even get a whole 20. You get the 10. 
But let me see JP act up next episode. If Tommy brings JP some money next episode and this nigga talking about I can't take that, that's your ass, JP. We coming for you. We coming. We ain't we ain't gonna allow that. We contacting power. We getting JP up off of here. Nope. We getting JP up off of here. <laughs> hey this is a concerned fan we don't need jp on here he is unstable i'm talking about unstable to a level we cannot bear (laughs) oh man we good now we good now we good now we could talk about we could talk about the samson brothers jp had he had enough he had enough He's good. First round knockout. I'm talking about we beat JP better than Diamond did Janard. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, Bradshaw. It ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't, it ain't no live with no JP. It ain't no live with JP. He's so far in debt. We don't even want him on the screen. <laughs> he gonna owe us. He get done with a live interview with her. They like matter of fact, JP. Uh, that hundred and ninety six. <laughs> what what Fat Joe say? Yesterday's prices are not today's prices. <laughs> no, no, no. That one ninety six was twenty twenty one prices. It's twenty twenty two, nigga. It's like even two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> it's even 200 jp even 200k where he said diamond got a uh he got a wave cap and he ball headed hey that is true i'd be looking at it too but it's cold out there in chicago you know that wind get to jumping on the back of your neck <laughs> <coughs> oh man i said that's a koofy but yeah man these two, these two, they out here talking about baseball and how he didn't get to see it when he was in there locked up. When I was first watching, I was looking. I said, man, what the hell is wrong with Janora's eye? But then I remember he had got beat up because his eye was like totally messed up. I was like, damn, what the hell is wrong with this dude? But, oh, man. Look at him. He looking at Diamond. Now, I was surprised that they had him playing baseball. I will say that that was cool, that they gave him something other else than basketball. You know, that's usually what they, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, it's a, it's a black guy. Give him a basketball. He can go hoop. But, you know, they had baseball up here, the, the White Sox. I'm assuming that they White Sox fans. They were high. Mm, they could be club, uh, Cubs fans. You know, they just won a couple of years back. So, let's just say that. Yeah, Bennigan, man. He out here. Oh, Bennigan was only recording because he wanted to know the barber's schedule. He's like, okay, they play baseball during the day, so I can go over there after lunch. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he was recording. But these two, they out here. They getting ready to do it up. They got some beer. But I was surprised that Jannar actually wants to give back to the community. Well, he just for the little black boys so they can have an opportunity to, you know, that the same that the white boys have. So I was like, that's cool. That, that's definitely cool to see him wanting to do that. Y'all, y'all hear Sharice, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button and subscribe button. Thank you all for that. I deeply appreciate it. Now, is Jannar really going to give that money back to the community? Mm, we don't know, but it sounds good. It definitely sounds good. Shy Girl said, baseball is huge in my city. Well, a lot of Midwest cities... Baseball is big. I mean, of course, it started to, to move over. This is a true story. I played baseball all the way up till I was 13. No, not 13. I was like 12. I quit baseball because the first time I got hit with a pitch, I said, oh, no, they throwing it. Because, like, we used to be in the underhand league when I was younger. My dad was a coach. We went to undefeated two years straight. I'm talking about everybody on the team hitting home runs, even the sorriest person. But home run. But then we got up there to self-pitch. Man, I got hit with one of them balls. I said, the hell with this. This ain't it. This is not it, man. Mm-mm. Told my dad. I went home. My dad was mean. Sharice could tell you. 
he was yelling at us, telling us to do stuff. Like, Dad, you can't get out there and do it. So he yelling at us, telling us to do it. I'm like, man, I quit that shit. He was mad as hell, too. But oh well, Dad. <laughs> oh well. I was not getting hit with no damn baseball. Calling this a sport. What'd you do today? Oh, man, I got beamed with a ball. Said, damn. They whooping your ass like that out there? Man, I wasn't trying to, but you know, I couldn't hit them damn pitches. But I thought it was cool. They went out there, they played some baseball, got some, you know what I'm saying, got some hits in. I'd have him batting right after can't get right. Because can't get right is gonna get you a home run, you know what I'm saying? Could bring everybody home. You want him batting about fifth or you know what I'm saying, fourth or fifth, so he could be the cleanup man, get us the grand slam. But yeah, his form wasn't that good, man. He'd been in jail too long. I told y'all, look, all the stories I tell y'all about my dad, they be true. Sharice vouched for it. She said, dad cussed out all the kids. But my dad don't cuss out her kids. I go over there, my nieces and nephews be acting a damn fool. My dad be over there, we just playing with them. We used to get yelled at, whoopings for nothing. Pittsburgh lose, he going off on us. Pittsburgh lose, my nieces and nephews over there, he don't care. He buying them chips. He just randomly has bags of chips in his pocket. Talk about Papa, I want chips. And he turn around, yeah, ha ha, bag of chips. I'm like, nigga, where you get them chips from, Dad? You told us we ain't had nothing left. You saving them for the kids. Uh, I think this episode was about, was it 47, 48 minutes? I think it was. I mean, you had the intro part and then. The credits come on. Yeah, I think it was about, it may have been, no, it may have been about 57 minutes. I told y'all, look, I tell y'all, I'm not, everything I tell y'all, yeah, sometimes I stretch the truth a little bit, but I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, but then I'm going to put a little bit of that ump onto it. You see how he's pitching? He pitching like, y'all know who he's imitating, right? Y'all know who he's imitating? Jagalay, Jagalay. Remember when he was pitching? He said, Jagalay, Jagalay. <laughs> yeah steven it did feel short and that's why i said it it was the regular length show but when you really think about it, it was really only six six major scenes this is the same scene as the first one and then lillian i'd be calling it lillian it's liliana Liliana and Tommy, they basically all of their scenes are the same in the house besides them meeting up with Flynn. Oh, yeah, Bernie Mac, man. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? That's one of my brother's favorite uh, comics. My little brother, Ant, he actually did stand up a couple of times when he was in Arizona. What up, Jay Hoodie? My young bull from Kansas City by the way of Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, jangling, jangling, jangling. Hey, you see how fast he threw that ball and tried to hit Diamond, though? That's why I stopped playing baseball. Jay Hoodie played baseball. But like I said, I got hit with that pitch at like 12. I looked my daddy in the eye and told him, look, I'm not the captain of this shit. I quit. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, ZK Mini. I watch it on the, um, I watch it on the Stars app. You know what I'm saying? I might get the episode early a little bit, but you know, I do not condone you guys doing that. Wait till the Stars app come out. <laughs> but there's ways out there to watch it, so. But what I want to know is, all right, we got him recording Diamond. What exactly is he looking for? Is he looking for Diamond to do something bad? Or he's just trying to, you know what I'm saying, see if he can catch him doing, like, you know what I'm saying? We, what is he actually recording for? Is it because he was assigned to Diamond once he got out? Or is, man, I'm just out here working and I'm doing this because I'm a dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm taking my job serious. But then again, this can't be for his job because if you're doing something for your job, especially for the police, they're going to tell you to go take a camera out there. They're not going to say use your cell phone. Because this is definitely going to get dismissed. You're going into the courtroom. Yeah, Your Honor, we got some uh, cell phone footage. The judge is gonna look at you like, man, you don't get this, man, you don't get this crap out of here. Yeah, 
Miss Davis, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy what we have here. You know, try to make it fun for everybody. Diamond can pick up on everyone, but can't pick up his brother's jealous. No, I think I think he knows his brother's a little bit jealous. And that's why when we got to the, even when we got to the fight, hell, even prior to that, Diamond is he's the he's the founder of CBI. So for him, it's like, hey, bro, I'm still gonna be calling the shots. I went to jail, I held it down. So when I got out, I'm still the man. So he senses it, but he's just looking at his brother like, you're really going to do this in front of everybody? That's why he didn't want to get in the ring with him, because he knew that he could beat him. Now, of course, we heard Jannar said he let him win. I don't think that he let him win. We're going to see, though, because I want to see what that plan is. Now, you see how Tommy was instigating it? That was good. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Quit all that kicking. I'm talking about let the legs fly. No, stop that kicking. We throwing hands in here. Yeah, see, Dre watches it. Yeah, it comes on, what, 9 o'clock my time on Saturday? Because it drops, what, midnight? Yeah, so 9 o'clock my time on the Stars app. If not, you just got to wait till Sunday at 9 p.m. Now, this fight... First, first things first, when they first came in here and Tommy came in straight talking business in front of everybody, man, we got this deal set up, man. We need to do it. It's like, hey, man, we don't we don't know everybody in here. Tommy, you know, people wear wires. You went through all that in New York. You don't know none of these people. Just came straight in. All right, man, got a deal. Let's set it up. Jannard talking about don't nothing go down to CBI without me knowing Like, okay, let's get in that ring then. We're gonna see what you know. We're gonna see what goes between you. He already knew. Look, he got these off-white socks on. See, you're wearing all this designer and stuff. But let's get something straight. Before y'all get on me talking about the clothes, I got some off-white stuff also. But but if I'm in the streets, and hear me out, hear me out. If I'm in the streets making moves, I'm not wearing all this. I'm not wearing all this. And I know y'all talking about, oh, they got money. Do they? Do they really got money like that? Because last I checked, Vic, he showed up. He didn't have all this money. Jannar was hurting when he got robbed. Jannar didn't try to make no moves on Tommy. Where's all the tough guy when a white guy named Casper came and robbed you all? Where was all the money at then? Y'all didn't have enough money, you know what I'm saying? Because you remember he said half of that money was mine, and y'all still didn't have enough money. If you really get money like that, you would have fronted the other half that Vic was short on, but you couldn't because all your money going into clothes and designers and that Lamborghini truck. That Lamborghini truck. Yeah, Hope, I'm in the Bay. I'm in the Bay Area. How's it going? How's it going? IG live, uh, Joseph is live now. Let me check that out. Y'all want to hear what he got to say, or let me see some. As you bring old Tommy up, money and power, power. And yeah, we were just talking about him too. Are you kidding me? You know, it kind of bothered me a little bit until I kind of just grew up a little bit and matured a little bit and kind of got deeper in the in the more businessy side of it instead of just you know the dream of I want to be an actor. I actually got to LA, went in those rooms, got denied at those auditions. All right, I'll, I'll, I saw the business <clears throat> side of it. So then, I'll probably upload that. <clears throat> I'll probably upload that. I thought they were going to be talking about the episode or something, but it sounded like, you know, they're just talking about how he got an act and everything. So I might upload that video and then uh, I'll see if we could talk about it maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday. But yeah, it seemed more like they were talking about how he got an act and it didn't really pertain to the show. So, you know, so I'm not going to take that away from y'all. We got to get back on this fight.
Did he play Debo's brother on next Friday? I'm not sure. Uh, remind me at the end. I'll look that up. I'll look that up on the, you know, saying on the free time that we have towards the end. <clears throat> but yeah, you get in this ring, you got to be ready. And you see what he did. It's a street fight. It's a street fight. As soon as he got in the ring, Jadard knew he was outside. He may have been outmatched. He got that first punch off. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, until the millions and millions in attendance at home. In the left corner, we got Jannar Samson, the little brother of the CBI organization that earned his spot while his brother Diamond was locked down in jail. In the black corner. Now in the gray, we got Diamond, the head of the CBI organization, a boxer turned barber from the south side of Chicago, did hard time, put Rojas in a wheelchair, Diamond, Samson. All right, let's get along, but Gennard ain't want to do none of that shit. He just, right when he got in the ring. <laughs> That's why when you out and about, man, especially if you're a regular person, somebody get in your face, don't let them do all that talking. You just got to get that first one in. Just got to get that first one in. Because if you're going to get jumped, hey, at least you got a punch in. But, you know what I'm saying? Gennari got in there and what he do? Caught him off guard. Wanted to show him, man. This ain't no game. And another thing about that is it wasn't disrespected with showing his brother Diamond that, hey, I'm really about this and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to be the head of it. Oh yeah, I thought yeah. Next Friday was um yeah it was Sticky Fingers. You better tell him it was call on Tyrone. Yeah, that was a little dude. But yeah, they ain't here fighting. And Jannard already tore up. He knew damn well he couldn't see nothing when he got in this ring, man. Tommy and Elijah over there betting five hundred dollars. Shoot, I definitely would have put my money on Diamond. Look at that face. You knew it was over. You ain't let Diamond do this. You ain't let Diamond do this. Yeah, Diamond. Diamond looks strong as hell, big as hell. He was an actual boxer. Like, no, nah, I'm not getting in the ring with you to take the number one spot. I don't even know what type of plan this is. Get whooped on? Like, all right. Maybe let my brother punk me. I'm not about to get whooped on it, potentially. Like, he was on the ground, and Diamond was still, pat, pat, pat. Jeez Louise. <laughs> that little kid say, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, he getting whooped so bad, he had the rope pulled down. Like, you know, when you be watching the knockouts, he didn't pull the whole rope down. They like, damn, this dude over here is looking. I knew he shouldn't have got that ring, man. He got them socks on. He's slipping around. Diamond solid pause. <laughs> he said he got whooped the two weeks in a row. Man, like, come on now. Why are you so mad with Tommy? Tommy saved your life two times. Y'all was about to get robbed. Then you got kidnapped. And Tommy was there both times to help out. What's the game looking like? Curry out there balling out, Devin. <laughs> said Jannard took the dive during the fight. Oh, hey, right when you said that, Devin, uh, I just checked my phone and it said, let me see, Steph different. Okay, hey, see, that's why I support y'all. Y'all know I keep up on a little bit of sports, but I got to talk about this. Thanks for that that update. If only Steph, If only Steph could do that in the playoffs. And we go into the game, not this week, what is it, March? Next week, in two weeks, I'll be at one of the, uh, the Warrior games. Bat minus six, for sure, for sure. Yeah, man, he took that slip during the fight. I don't know what the plan is, but you heard Tommy. Hey, Diamond, you got the juice now. What we going to do? What we going to do? What we going to do? Jannar starting to seem like Reek. Yeah, he annoying. Nah, you know who Jannar is seeming like? He's seeming like Kane. 
You remember how Kane was acting when he found out that Drew was next in line? That's how he's acting, just like Kane. I originally compared Kane to Vic, but it's really Jannard's ass. Jealous of your brother. You want to be the head guy, but you can't be because you don't have the brains or the brawn. <laughs> Hell yeah. Look at that. Now, Tommy got some bread, but you remember, you remember Diamond, I'm not Diamond, JP said, oh, I can't accept that money. Tommy took that money back. Then he said, okay, you can't take that money. Give it to me. I'll show you what to do with it. Look at that. Tommy, in one day's time, he turned 500 into 1,000. My man that doubled his money and he got 10 bricks and he's already trying to put a plan together. What is JP doing? What is J JP need to be riding around with Tommy and getting in these streets? That's what he need to be doing. Tommy looked at JP. He didn't even mention no, no, I got I got $150,000 worth of product. You know what I'm saying? My half at least. I got $150,000. He ain't tell him nothing that. What up, support gamer? What's going on, my brother? What is going on? Damn, Curry, 15 for 21. He ain't, he reminded me of me when I was younger. <clears throat> but now we got the plan in play. We can get on out there. Now, I was interested in this alderman. And this is what I was saying with Claudia. Because we already went over the, uh, the meeting didn't go as planned. Thanks to Walter. But the alderman, you know, he just, anybody feeling freaky? He he, he trying to make it happen. He trying to see what she on. You know what I'm saying? What's up? What's, what's good? You know what I'm saying? Now, what he did mess up with is you remember when she told him how much money would it be? He said the price ain't changed. Bro, this is your opportunity. If you're going to be crooked, you might as well be crooked all the way. Because any way it goes, you accept the money, you're going down. It don't matter if it's a thousand, it don't matter if it's a thousand dollars, ten thousand, twenty thousand, you going down. So you might as well tell them instead of giving me my five thousand dollars a month, which is low, you can do a crown for five thousand a month, and there ain't no money, sixty a year. I mean, well, it is tax free. As an alderman, he probably make in Chicago, he might make 70, 80. So you be pushing about 130, 140 with 60 tax free, that ain't that bad. But I'd be telling them, no, nah, I need at least a hundred thousand a year. At least a hundred thousand. If I'm gonna be doing something shady, hundred thousand a year ain't that much. What eighty three hundred a month or something like that? Okay, like eight three 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 or something like that. Yeah, man. In fact, let me just verify that, just in case. I, you know, saying when if y'all ever see me going down, y'all be like, damn. Oh no, it ain't no. Oh no, I'm doing the wrong thing. Y'all like, damn, Mo went down, man. Yeah, I was right. 8333 a month. That's all it is. And y'all can make that even 10000 But Mo went down, man. He was taking money. He was accepting bribes. He went out like a G, though, because he didn't take no 100000 a year. Mo went down for at least 2.5 a year. <laughs> Mo went down for 1.5. It ain't that bad. And it's a white collar, uh, white collar crime, too. Shoot. Well, I mean, I'm black, so I'm gonna have to do that time. But it, it's all the men. Shit. Six months with three years of probation, restitution. He probably only have to pay back like two hundred thousand. He's gonna get to keep the other eight. Yeah. Yeah. But I watch American Greed. That's why I know about all this stuff, y'all. It's just I don't know. <laughs> if you're gonna do it, then do it. <clears throat> but his ass got scared to ask for that more money. Claudia over there doing what her dad said. You remember, her dad told her to get dressed up real nice, go stimulate his mind. So he falling for it. He talking about, mm, do you taste that citrus? Oh, yeah. That citrus, the white flowers. Oh, Whew, Claudia, you want some of this? Nah. She playing. I'm talking about. I know what school your daughter went to. I know what school your daughter went to, Liam. Now when you start involving the kids and stuff. That's when people get scared. He knew if he started asking for six, seven thousand dollars a month, they'd be like, "Damn!" Any given time, they're like, "You know what? We ain't paying this dude that kind of money. We ain't paying to do that kind of money." 
But he has his hands cut out. I mean, the work cut out for him. His hands cut out. Because he got to make sure that all them people are good that that deal with the Flynn organization. Like, come on, man. Simon and them are getting in trouble for bull. Uh, I won't say he pimped his daughter because it's not like he had her go out there and sell herself. I mean, she's the business person. She's the one that handles the books and everything. I mean, of course, you know what you're dealing with. She wasn't going to go out there in a uh, <laughs> a T-shirt and some jeans talking about, hey, all the men, you owe us some money. You're going to look at you like, who the hell are you? Get out of here. And he had her meeting her at a nice, fancy restaurant. It's not like, it's not like you know what I'm saying? He said put something on to entice him, stimulate his mind. Let's look at what she's wearing, actually. Okay, it's a little revealing. But it ain't nothing to make me lose my damn mind. Like, oh man, she is hot. Well, okay. She got on this. I don't even know what the hell you would call this. But it's like, all right, cool. You got red lipstick on, but I am not impressed. I'm not impressed with that red lipstick. I want to see them green dollars in my pocket. That's what we here for business. Oh, you don't want me? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> It's strange to tell your daughter to dress up sexy, but he didn't tell her to dress up sexy. He didn't tell her to dress up sexy. He just told her to put on something to stimulate his mind. That's all it is. That's all it is. He wanted her to go look good and look presentable. It's just like a dad saying, oh, man, you look beautiful in your dress. Is that bad to say? I want you to look beautiful in your prom. I mean, not your prom, but yeah, I mean, even then, I want you to look beautiful in your prom. Is that is that strange? Is it strange? I want you to be beautiful on your wedding day. No, it's just I want you to be beautiful when you go out there and talk to this man about this business for the family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think it would have been strange for a dad to say, man, go out there with your bummiest shit on and try to make this business deal happen. Okay, dad. <laughs> <laughs> All he did was say, go stimulate your mind. Let me ease your mind. Bring you in this world. Oh, yeah. Hey, put a little sugar on it. Put a little sugar on it. Put a little sugar on it. When I get my cake with the icing on, I don't want no cake with no sugar. Sugar-free icing. Put some sugar on it. Put some sugar on it. Put some sugar on it. When you go to the store and you go buy, when you go buy a car, you don't want, let me get that plain Jane car right there without the CD player. Now put some sugar on it. I want the navigation in there. I want the moon. Put some sugar on it. Put some sugar on it. That's all you're saying. Put some sugar on it. We need this. If not, we're going down. Put some sugar on it. Come on, y'all. Y'all see my side. Put some sugar on it. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Put some sugar on it. Putting some sugar on it is no different than us black folk putting some just some seasoning on our chicken. You ain't just gonna take that chicken out there dry, is you? No, you gonna put some seasoning on it. Now, in white people turn, they put sugar. They consider sugar their spices and seasoning. So put some sugar on it. That's all. That's all. <laughs> That's all. He wanted her to show off the assets. Okay, I get it. I know I'm joking around with y'all, but she ain't showing off no assets. I'm looking at this. I'm upset. There ain't no assets here. I'm upset. <laughs> yeah, JT, I was giving you a hard time. I know what you said. I know what you said. But you know, I'm you know, I can't I can't agree with everything. I gotta give y'all some, some where's the sugar at though? Ladies, I want everybody to rate this on a scale of one to ten. Is this outfit putting some sugar on it, or is this just some shit, something I had in the closet? I'll take the rating, please, and I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'm gonna give me another drink, but I want to know what the rating is for this. Is this some sugar on it, or this is just I got the plain Jane on? Did she put some sugar on here? Is there sugar on here, please? A scale of one to five. Is there sugar on this? Let me know right now. Oh, also, I ain't forgetting. I ain't forgetting. Hold on. Where we at? Hit that like button, please, before I get back. Where we at? 80. 
hey, let's let's get a hundred likes. I'll be right back. A hundred likes, and let me know what y'all rate this outfit. Is it some sugar on it, or is she just showed up half assing it, going against what her father asked? Let me know. we got i'm seeing one zeros i'm seeing people not even ranking and they talking about just a line I mean nope it <laughs> nope okay april gave us our highest rate number three the blouse was super cute but she was not all that i rate her three are you oh we don't Whoa, we don't degrade women here. We don't rate women. We're rating the outfit. We do not do that over here. Moore is an avid supporter of women. We're not going to do that on this channel, Donna. <laughs> we do not rate women. We're rating the outfit. I'm talking neck down. <laughs> Edith says she looked at her daddy like, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> facts she looked at her dad like what you want me to go out there with liam this guy's name is liam alderman liam <laughs> miles said kind of gothic this is the kind of outfit they uh <laughs> well hell we know what kind of club she went to remember she went to that little gothic party uh party the other night well the first episode Okay, okay. Virgin Love said it's a 10. All right, so the numbers are starting to come in. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay. No offense to anybody in here, but I'm looking at it. Just a white girl. Now to look. Guess they're on a date. Look like they're arguing over there. And did she just give that man some money? I'm like, hey, man. Hey, bro, you see that? She just tossed him a stack of money. I know... I know this ain't no no divorce papers or nothing because it's kind of bulgy. How much y'all think is in there? Five thousand. It gotta be like five thousand. Maybe you could probably get. Mm, that's that's thin though. Like I said, you could probably get a ten thousand stack in there, but I'm thinking that's more like five thousand. <laughs> oh no, dinner girl. We ain't no. We ain't no. Uh... We ain't the godfather over here. We don't get into all that dress size and all that. I don't give a damn. We just saying, hey, did it look good or did it not look good? You know what I'm saying? Slim women got their looks. Thick women got their looks. Bigger women got their looks. Did it look good? We don't care about the dress size and all that. <laughs> all right, so we all in agreement. You know what I'm saying? You can put the, you can put a your pin, uh, 10 stack in that thing. Support said, first I had to rewind that scene because I thought he told Claudia put some sugar on her referring to the chick she was... <laughs> nah, you're talking about just put a little sugar on it on out here. She, she got in that mirror. She said, girl, I look good. You know what I'm saying? She had to snap that picture. Send it to the, the little Asian girl that she's messing with. But 10000 she didn't even touch that bread either. That bread be hard, too. You go to them restaurants... They be giving you that bread, the outside be hard, and they be talking about this is how it's supposed to be. I'm like, man, I don't want that. I want the soft bread. Uh, what uh, next power are we going to uh, have after Force, do I think? Uh, Raising Canaan. Raising Canaan Season 2. They're filming it. They actually just stopped. I read an article yesterday. No, what's Saturday? I read an article Friday. So they stopped uh, filming for some reason they had, but they stopped filming. I think Raising Canaan is going to be next. Then BMF will come back. Then it'll be season three of um, book two. And then I'm not sure after then. I don't know if it's going to be season two of book four or it's going to be season five. I mean, not season five, but uh, book five influence. Yeah, Adamsville, she got over on Liam, and he had the upper hand. They need him more than they need, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
if they go give somebody else money, I still got me a job. And actually, my hands are clean now. Oh, yeah, I need more. I need double. This little 10 bands y'all giving me, this ain't enough. We heard Tommy and Diamond say that the streets are hot when they were making their run. So, no, nah, we need, I need, a, this is 10. I looked at it and told them, I need five. I need five on top of that. I need five on top of that. You give me 15,000 now, I make sure all y'all stay out of jail. But since we talking about what people don't like, we talking about what people don't like. Liam said, man, you know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to end in some sex. She said, if I gave you a roadmap and a manual, you wouldn't know what to do with it. I said, girl, I don't dabble in the in that region with the white women, but <laughs> let me show you something. <laughs> That's what Liam should have did. He should have went crazy. Like, give me a chance. I'll show you what I do with it. <laughs> Where does P Valley, uh, P Valley fall? In line, well, they say this probably be P Valley probably won't be till. Uh, I'm trying to even think if they drop P Valley, they gotta they gotta give power a break. Power of BMF, they gotta have it in between that because if they dropping that the same weekends that power come out, they're gonna lose a lot of views and ratings on it because y'all gonna be on live with me. We ain't gonna be watching no P Valley over power, but I will be doing lives for P Valley when they come back whenever they do. Ray Ray said, greed will kill you. Yeah, it will kill you. We all got to go at some time. Why not be greedy while we at it? But he's not even being greedy, though. Let's be honest. He's already accepting dirty money. Well, it's not dirty money. It's, I mean, it's clean money coming. We don't know where if it's dirty on their end, but it's coming to you. So now it's becoming dirty money. So he's already in the game. And if you're going to risk your job, you're going to risk your job for 10 or you're going to risk your job for 15. And in the long run, you got 120 to what? Five on top of that, 60. 120 a year compared to 180. Give me that 180 if I'm risking my job. <laughs> yeah, we P Valley been off for almost two years. Hell, they bought that club and they realized they ain't have enough money for it. Ain't too many people spending that much money out there in no damn Mississippi. Yeah, P Valley was on Sundays. But I'm gonna um I'm gonna drop the link because we're almost coming up on two hours. So I'm gonna drop the link if anybody wants to call in on here. Let me know what you think about the episode. We could definitely do that. And y'all thought I was playing. Come on now. We got eight more likes. I just asked for 100 likes, please. That's all. <clears throat> Power influence for 2022 or 2023. Uh, I'd say wait till 2023. You don't want to. Well, it just depends. It, it really depends on Paramount. Now. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. As of right now, Paramount would be smart to flood the market. Boom, 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 boom. You don't let too many weekends go by when you have something hot. But you could draw it out. You could draw out all these shows and then start spacing them out. You do one for two months, have a month off in two months. People will lose interest. But if you dropping them back to back, you eating that money up. This will give you an opportunity to come up with more things. But you got to worry about the money you have now because that fan base may not be there in the future. I want to know, like, if there was any way if they did a survey of how many people didn't watch any of the spinoffs because, oh, man, they killed off ghosts. So. You got to you got to stick to it while it's hot. And if these power shows are hot, then hey. Why not? Why not drop them things? Y'all ain't tell me Steph had 50. Shout out to Miss V for that five dollars. I think that Jannard is more like Monet. They both ran the business in absence, but they don't 
uh, want to step back when the real boss returns. I could see that. I could see that her jealousy, though, wasn't at the level that his was. But I agree. It's that. It's that power that you're losing. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't want to seem like he didn't have that when they were in the when they were in the barbershop and they pulled their guns on Tommy. He didn't want to seem like, uh, you know, what I'm saying I called the shots in here. So that that is that is good. I might actually do a comparison to how Monet lost the power and Gennard did. Matter of fact, Miss V, I'm going to do that. that. I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to go get some of the clips from the old stuff and I'm going to compare how they both essentially lost time because they you remember diamond did the same 10 years that uh wait lorenzo did 15 out of the 25 Gen i mean not Gennard. diamonds diamonds whole thing was 15 so hey that is oh miss v everyone say thank you to miss v for pointing that out i like that i like that diamond and lorenzo both did 15 years Monet and Gennard both ran the business while they were gone. Once they got out of jail, both of them lost the business, and both of them had that power void that they lost. They both basically got stepped down. Monet was forced to retire. Diamond, he retired. He retired them. I'm talking about got in that ring and ended them. Hmm. <laughs> But were they parents going in? I must have missed something. Good point. Monet was driven by family. Um, Miles, when it really came down to it, Monet wasn't driven by family. Monet was driven by Monet. Think about it. She kicked, she kicked Kane out the house. So that's family. She kicked him out the house. She uh, basically told Diana, you can't do anything but run the books. And she told Drew, you can't be who you are. You can't mess with that kid no more. So, and she lied to her son. The other one, you know, Zeke, the 19, no, the 23-year-old, the nephew. So was Monet really about family or was Monet about Monet? Monet said, Zeke is going to go to the NBA. We gonna follow him, and y'all gonna work for him. Was Monet really about the family, or was Monet for her? Monet wanted to put the house up, the house that Lorenzo worked for, the house that Lorenzo got for her and his kids. But she wanted to put it all up for Zeke that she was lying about the whole time. Monet was about Monet. Monet wanted to get Zeke out and told Kane, "You got to deal with what you did with that cop with Ramirez's body," because she was worried about him making it to the NBA so she could live a lavish life and be his manager and basically rob him of his money because she don't know what the hell she's doing as no manager. My bad, Monet, but I had to get on you. I had to get on you. My boy, Miles, I, I, hey, I rock with Miles. I just had to say, Monet was about Monet. Monet, Monet wasn't about the family when Zeke was in the jail for 12 hours, when she was out having dates with Dante Spears, playing Nene Stewart. Up in the helicopter, I've never been on a helicopter ride before. Now, Monet wasn't about family, Monet was about Monet Nene Stewart. <laughs> yeah, it was the exit strategy for her. Drew didn't need to exit anything, Drew was a regular kid, Diana didn't need to exit anything, she was a regular kid. Zeke didn't need to exit anything. He was a basketball player. Now, Kane, he was in the streets. But did he really need to exit anything? They had money. They had a million liquid. You remember until they bailed out Lorenzo, they had a million cash. They had a legit bar. They didn't have to move drugs. They chose to move drugs. So Monet was really for her. What up, Court Court? What up, Court Court? So the link is up, and I have it pinned in the chat room. So if you guys want to join in, ask me anything, it's cool. If not... You know, you can just throw those questions out to me and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. <laughs> I'll let you know what I think. And I'm starting to... 
I'm starting a new thing. Dang. <clears throat> starting a new thing on my social media where I got a 60 second rundown of the show. So I'm just doing like a quick recap. That'll be on my Instagram. Make sure y'all follow me on Instagram. I'm about to start posting a lot more on there. Also on TikTok. I told you I'm starting to expand a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> Mouse, <laughs> Mouse said I had a simp moment. <laughs> nah, it's all good, brother. It's all good, brother. Nah, I was like, I like, I know my boy Miles ain't. I know Miles didn't think. Nah, Miles tripping right now. Miles, that ain't that ain't the Miles I know. That ain't the Miles I know. Yeah, see. B more said Jannar knows Lily. Curious about their relationship. That's what I was saying. Remember, I said that she had 10 bricks, but she was living in Chicago. She was maybe moving work like on a smaller scale. You know? So her working with Jannar and Jannar owes her eight thousand dollars. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, Jannar owes her money. And that's what I was saying. She was working when she got to Chicago. That's why she was staying in that house because she wasn't really getting money like that. But she had those 10 bricks. She just had to figure out when and how she was going to move it without getting caught by Jannar. Because if let's just say Jannar found out that she had 10 keys, he's old. Oh, no, you have to come up off that. So that's why she had them hidden. She was trying to find that, that perfect moment to at least sell one at a time. But hell, Gennaro, you eight thousand dollars. Tommy said he'll get that back. I forgot all about that. Good call out, B more. Good call out. Crystal Ball is power. Go season three crossover timeline between power and force. Mm, let me see. Power go season three and the crossover timeline between. Um. You could do that. I wish. So back then, I don't know if they had the direction of doing all these spinoffs. I think the spinoffs eventually came later when they got to season like five, six. They said, oh, we can start doing spinoffs with all the characters. So I wish we would have got more of a background of like how Crystal Ball was, uh, Lobos, how we're seeing here. You know what I'm saying? We're starting to get a – they gave us a little bit, and then they just, you know saying? They threw Mecca in there, Dante to connect it. So I wish we would have got a little bit more back then, but it's primarily focused on what Tommy and Ghost and everybody was doing. What's going on, Brillo? I got you, bro. I got you. I'm going to bring you on real quick. <laughs> Monet was looking great performing with DJ Khaled last night. Man, I didn't watch none of that. I was recording Power while, while it was on, and all I seen was people saying it was trash, like the dunk contest. So... What I did was I finished recording. I went back and watched the highlights, and that's when I was talking about the Tims. I said, man, what the hell? The, I ain't even no basketball player, but it was one of those moments. Who told them to take the game that I love and put Tims on the basketball court? Who told them to do this, damn it? JT, when is too big coming over to uh, Forrest? I really don't know, man. I looked at the – you know, I, I go and look at the credits, but they – Power played me. They said he was going to be in two or three episodes in book two, and he wasn't. So I don't know, man. I don't even know who to trust. This got me feeling like, who can I run to? <laughs> uh, can y'all hear me? Is it echo or anything? Because I know yesterday, uh, not yesterday, but Friday when we went live, they said it was a little bit of an echo with me. But I'm going to bring you up, Brillo. What up, though? What's going can on, brother? Yeah, I can man, hear you. And I'm out here. I've got a couple, sec couple seconds before I hit the scene, man. <laughs> I appreciate the love you be showing. Uh, no problem, brother. Oh, I got to bring up. I'm going to bring up your video before you get off, too. Somebody, uh, one of your subscribers come up and they uh, subscribe to me, man. So you really got to, uh, you really got to, uh, the yoke, they really locked in with you, man. For real. You yeah, like, man. You go, go rock. With my page, like they do that every single time, and I appreciate that. Oh, no problem, sure. bro. I told you, whenever you in here, if you want to come up, man, just join in. I I bring you up, brother. Yeah, I just wanted to talk real quick and see, uh, like, 
I think the series is going at a good pace, man. I'm seeing a lot of people being kind of impatient with it. Yeah. They, they'll by episode five, they'll they'll change their mind. Same thing happened with Raising Canaan, if you remember. Mm. Start off after that first episode. Yeah, I was gonna even say, even with, with Power Book Two, the first season, it was it was good. It wasn't as good as season two, but that's what I'm saying. You got to understand, we're introducing all new characters. We're we're bringing in a whole new storyline. The reason Power was so good when we first seen it is because this was all new to us. You know what I'm saying? Right. So bringing in these new characters, we like, okay, cool. But with the original well, Power... Go ahead. No, go ahead, bro. My bad. No, no I was just going to say, like, the original Power, when we're seeing it, everything is brand new to us. So now we see Tommy and people have an expectation of, what Tommy's doing compared to the original power, but Tommy is going to be Tommy. He's the same Tommy that we've seen. It's just, we're introducing all these other characters and we got to get to know them. And then we're going to be like, okay, this is actually pretty good. Right. One thing I just wanted to talk about real quick is Vic, man. You know, I've been on Vic head. If you be keeping <laughs> up, but Vic showed me something this last episode, man. He, uh, he was moving kind of like the two. He even he wasn't emotional when he told Claudia that he saw. Her, I mean, uh, yeah, Gloria, that he saw her with Tommy. Mm -hmm. uh, he was still willing to work with Tommy. Now, of course, he don't like her, like him because he got feelings for, uh, for old girl. But I just like the way he was moving. Uh, he was like like right now, like he wasn't too much in his feelings. He about that cheese, and you saw him, he willing to work with Tommy, even though he don't like him. So I didn't see that coming. I thought he was gonna be moving like a sucker. Now it's still time for him to, uh, you know, still do something. <laughs> something else. He had a good episode to me this this last episode. Yeah, and that's what he said. Even though they had their disagreements, you know, what I'm saying if it means making some money, then I'm gonna be with it. I I don't know how far he's gonna go. I'm I'm thinking the relationship is gonna be. We might see, uh, you know, saying the partnership between him diamond and tommy with you know saying gloria being the i'm not not gloria claudia being the one that you know saying bringing the work into them so they could work together of course they're going to have they're going to have to have a little bit of beef you know saying just to keep the show right, right. Just, just saying. Because, you know that's his girl he got feelings for her yeah. and in you know, some cultures it, it's difficult to go against your father or your parents you know yeah that's true so, he uh and like she's not gonna wait on him or whatever. But uh I think the episode was solid. I got a crazy little theory. Let me see what you think about this before I get up out of here. Um sure. and I think it in the chat. It's like uh now Tommy's grandma is in that uh, home, right? And they touched on it, like who's paying for it? Mm -hmm. What if uh the friends are paying? What if Tommy's related to him? Because I think if his mom had anything to do with it, she would have been spent that money. Like she, she's not even responsible enough. So, and you know how power love to hit us with some paternity stuff. Definitely. So, and you're not too far off because if you remember when he met Walter, what did Walter tell him? It's like I see it in you. He said yeah. something. About it. Tommy, he like, looked, he pointed at him. Yeah, and Tommy he, said, "I'm a mutt," and he said, "You're not a mutt to me." He smell it on. Yeah, so, me. I mean, it could be. Plus, him and Claudia. They, I mean. I keep, I keep getting Claudia and Gloria. Gloria, me, yeah, I do too. <laughs> they got some chemistry, but it's not like sexual chemistry. It's like, you know, like they rocking with each other. You know what I mean? It was like a different, a weird little vibe um, that I got when they had their little interaction. Like he respected her. He was saying everything that she wanted to hear. And so they definitely going to be working together. And that's just one, that's just my little theory. We'll see if I'm wrong, I'm wrong but <laughs> yeah, we definitely gonna see how it plays out. But hey, brother, you be safe out there. I'm not gonna ask you where you know. Say I'll hit you up offline to see where you went out to. But yeah, man, be safe out there tonight, man. And if you are gambling, and don't blow that check. Don't be like JP out here. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Keep right, it no up, problem, brother. You know, you know we locked in. I get all right, All right, we got Miss Nurse, Miss Nurse 78. Thank you for that five dollars. Great channel. Keep it up. I'm looking forward to the Lorenzo. I mean Lorenz. Lorenzo. Oh, Lorenz. My bad. Lorenz spinoff. Also, do you think Tasha will pop up in force? Mm, Vanessa will not pop up in force. 
she's hiding right now. They don't really have any money. And I don't think there's no reason for, for us to even see her, especially after she snitched on Tommy. Like the Tommy we know, I mean, of course they probably talk it out, but there, there wouldn't be any reason for Tasha to show up in this series. Just for the simple fact that she wasn't recording in the uh, book two because she's on Queens. I didn't even do the finale for that either. But yeah, she's not going to show up in this. It it wouldn't it wouldn't make any sense to have her show up on here. Exactly, Donna. Um, he's Italian, but Teresi is Italian. Walter Flynn is Irish. They from Ireland, so I mean, Italy and Ireland they they aren't close to each other. But I mean, he got that European. Of course, we know he got that European blood in him. <laughs> yeah, Tasha. Everybody thinks Tommy is dead. And as of right now, that's, you know, saying that's what it is. Now, we are going to see. We did discover that those are two special agents. The ones that were taking pictures are special agents. These two are special agents here. So that means they are the feds. They said, you know what? Y'all get out there and go take some pictures. I don't know who they watching, though. I don't know if they were there for the Flins. Were they there for... CBI? I don't know. Because as of right now, well, of course, most criminals don't know if the feds are building a case on them until that, you know, say until it's dropped on them. Let's say they got a good lawyer and the lawyer can actually call up there to the fed and see what kind of investigation they got pending. But for him to assume that, you know, saying the feds don't have nothing on them, he could have been wrong. He could have been wrong. And when they start taking photos, man, they building that case. See, and now, see, look, now y'all digging in deep now. Anna said Tommy's mom is Irish. So if she, if Kate's Irish, what if, what if Flynn is paying for a Miriam? I don't know, man. That, that's putting us into a, that, I mean, that's going to be a lot of, um, hmm, I'm trying to even think of how they would do it. Maybe with Walter being sick, he could say something like, man, we got to uh, make sure that uh, Miriam, I'm paying for such and such all year long. You know what I'm saying? It, it might be something he says once he, you know, he exposes that he's sick because no one in the family knows. They just think he's smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Tell him, hey, man. See, y'all remember more than me. So it is confirmed that Kate is Irish. Tressy is Italian. I think I'm Irish too. I think I'm Irish too. I might be. Might be a little bit Irish. I think. Um, what would I be? I think I'm like one thirty. Uh, I'm one eighteenth Irish. Put it like that. <laughs> one eighteenth Irish. Mo the Irishman. Yeah, Vic knows he's sick. Vic was in the room. But we don't know how sick he is and to what extent. Because whenever he's on there with the with the nurse and stuff, it's not like they said you got a certain amount of time. They're just saying you're sick and you need to take your meds. But he popping the meds. He take the meds with straight liquor. He don't be giving a damn. All right, hold on. Y'all pouring them in, man. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Neek, I'm thinking the storyline is running concurrent with uh, season two of Power Book Two, because Tommy left at the end of uh, season one. That would give him time to get to Chicago, because he left and went directly to L, well, to California. So I'm thinking if this is picking up, this is running like right along with everything that's going on with Tariq right now. That's what I'm thinking as far as that. But then his power, it really. There's really no set order in power. They could jump two or three years. It's just, you know, saying today is February 18th or February 20th, 2022. Yesterday was February 17th, 1997. I'm like, damn. 
wait a minute, this is raising Canaan. <laughs> JT, you said this dude isn't a fed? No, we looked him up. This dude is a legit fed. Both of them are special agents. Both of them are special agents. So we got Brother Man. Yeah, that was one of the first things we looked up. So these two are special agents. It's just they're special agents. They said they are feds. Special agent uh, Edgar Vargas, Brian Keys. Yeah, so Brian Keys, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Damn, let me make this smaller. Yeah, there you go, y'all. So this is a special agent. Special agent Edgar Vargas, Brian Keyes. So he's an agent. These two are actual feds, and they're taking pictures. So I don't know who they were there for. Was it Tommy or was it... Uh, well, I know it wasn't Tommy because they don't even know Tommy's alive. But was it for the Flins or was it for CBI? And then the other agent is, so we'll call him Vargas. Uh, Vargas. And the other one is Rowan, Rona, Ronin. I couldn't pronounce the name, so I just called her Agent Kayla. And then that's Agent Kayla right there with the dreads. Got them pictures of Tommy out there at the Mustangs. Make sure you zoom in on that license plate where you see who this white boy is. Yep, and then that's her. Yep, that's what I'm saying, Donna. They didn't know who Tommy was, so when they took the picture, they just said it's a new face. So that's one of the, you know, you watch the crime shows. They put the picture up on the wall with a question mark, and they're wondering... Who is this guy? We got to dig a little bit deeper. <laughs> hey, man, who is this guy? He's a villain. We got to watch out for him. Guard mill. Oh, that was from the first episode. The new Greg and Angela. Man, Greg and Angela, them two out there. I was like, oh my gosh. I don't think I don't think my boy uh special agent Vargas is uh you know what I'm saying I don't think these two are intimate with each other. You could tell she's all about the business. She ain't giving it up to my boy. He over here smoking cigarettes. She don't like cigarettes anyway. Rich said this episode I felt like I watched an hour of nothing. Well, it it was more of a putting the puzzle together you know what I'm saying it's just putting the pieces now we see why you know what I'm saying the Flynn's didn't really mess with cbi because they thought that they were the ones that did the hit on paulie's wife we see that tommy got some work he's trying to bring everyone together we got the the connecting pieces between claudia and tommy tommy and vic working together Jannard and diamond did their thing to work with tommy so that's what this was this was just the you know, saying bringing the glue out and starting to put things together so we can move forward. And then we'll start getting that action because I got the trailer for episode four, which we'll do in probably like 10, 15 minutes. And we're going to see that there's some some action starting to build up. Now, you know how we got Kanan, Tommy and Ghost. This time we got two white boys and one black guy, this new crew that they might be putting together. Whose name was Tommy's car registered to? I don't know. That's what that's what we need to find out. I went back and rewatched that episode because when Tommy got the registration, I thought they were going to at least show the paper or something so we could see if there was a name or, you know, saying a driver's license. But I don't know, man. It seems like everything is clean.
the fight scene was the best. Yeah, the fight scene was good. I'm glad we got to see something like that. And he showed his dominance. But what is the plan? What is the plan that Jannard has in place? Talking about I let him win. Now we can start to move forward with the plan. Like, uh, What plan are we talking about, brother? What plan are we talking about? Then we got Miss Claudia in here. She didn't told Tommy, look, I got something to kick your teeth in 10 times over. If I'm Tommy, I heard that. Oh, I'm not trying that product. I'm not trying that product. Kick my teeth in 10 times over. I just picked up money from a junkie. You know what I'm saying? I don't want, I don't want no parts of anything that laid me out like that. Quick question. When the officer ran Tommy name last episode, what did it came up? Deceased or no? Uh, court court. We don't know what Tommy's name is right now. He could have a fake ID, fake registration and everything. But I mean, did he? I don't even think he really ran it. Remember, he asked for it. He just looked at it. He didn't go back to the car or anything. He just looked at it in the scene that they matched. So for him and that was showing Tommy's white privilege that he didn't do anything. He's like, oh, this is your car. Why didn't you say something? Yeah, bro, we do this and do this. So he didn't really run it. He just literally looked at it. Okay, the name on the driver's license matches the registration. It is your car. And then he let him go. So they didn't go like too thorough with digging in and seeing who he was. Gloria is a fed. She led the feds on to the Flynn's trail and got Tommy roped in on it. That's what that's what a lot of people were saying when we first uh started support. Matter of fact, where is it at? We don't know. Like I said, she was in the building. If you watch, she was in the building before Tommy came in. And then she walked out. And that's why when she came back, she said, oh, I see what type of business you're into. But what I don't understand is, why are you upset with Tommy being in this type of business? I just got into the city. You work for these guys. That means you're in the business also. How are you going to be upset with me when you're in the business and you serve these? And on top of that, you are smashing the boss's son. I don't understand this logic. Someone, please, a woman, please explain that to me. What difference is it that Tommy moves drugs in the city and she works for the drug dealers and having sex with the drug dealers? What is the difference? How can she really get mad at Tommy for that? Or am I overthinking it? Neek, Neek, she can't get nothing new. She works for the drug dealers. They own your bar. What do you mean get something new? Quit your job. Get out of this environment. How are you going to find somebody new when your ass got to come to work, work for the dope dealer, have sex with the dope dealer? Who you going to meet? This nigga Vic has a key to your house. That's why she asked Tommy, could I come over? Because Vic got that key to the house. And she knows that Vic seen her with Tommy. So that's why she's like, oh, I ain't going back to the house. What do you mean you want something new? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nick, you just started me on Gloria. You just... Gloria is my crush now. Because R.I.P. to Carrie. So I had to move on. You know what I'm saying? I want something new. I don't want a professor no more that's sleeping with students. I want something new. I want the bartender. But she dealing with dope boys. And it's unfortunate for me. Both of them are white. Gloria don't like black men. Gloria don't like us black folk. Come on, man. I think she wanted an alternative to the thug she dating. So she goes to another thug. She went to a dude that just came in the city and at 11 o'clock in the morning gave this man Jameson. And by the end of the night, gave him the soup you're not gonna get a better outcome acting the same way if tommy smashed the first day i'm sure vic smashed the first day i'm sure vic smashed the first day come on y'all annette said uh vic's dad's using her spot for meetings is this, I mean, this is her bar, but she's paying for security. Like, this place wouldn't make no, no money without Vic. So she was sleeping with Vic to make some money. Like, that's the only way this place is drawing it money. 
Because if not, we seen when Tommy was in there, it was like two people in there. Then you had those two girls on the end. You know, they wasn't buying no money. Simon was in there throwing all the money. Now, Gloria, I got to get on you. I'm sorry. I didn't want to have to do it. Neek did it. This is all Neek's fault. Neek the Supreme. Mm-hmm. This is all on Neek. I ain't want nothing to do with it. But, hey, you want something better, tell Vic, tell Walter, hey, y'all can't be doing drug exchanges, drug meetings in my, my bar. That, that, that's all. <laughs> nah, nigga, there ain't no hold on now, Neek. No, you got it. You got to start it. Yeah, it's, um, she wants something new. She mad at Tommy for what she do. You up? Tommy talking about always. You want company? Always. She wants something new, but she going right back to it. So if she gets hurt in this equation, if something bad happens to the building, it's nobody's fault but Gloria's fault for dealing with these guys. You know what he's doing. And if she is a fed, that's even worse because you definitely ain't supposed to be sleeping with the people you watching that you're doing surveillance on that you're undercover with. So, Gloria, is there something? I know I know we don't, we're not supposed to ask these kind of questions. We're not supposed to ask these kind of questions. But we've seen Carrie went to go get help. Carrie had a sex addiction. Is that what we're seeing here? Is that what we're seeing here? If so, wink twice. You know what I'm saying? If so, wink twice. Oh, Kendall. Yeah, I got something. Because we're we not going to gloss over that now. I, I looked real in depth to this. Now you remember, she went out here. Oh, oh, and I'm about to debunk everything that you guys are just saying. Now I, I definitely appreciate you guys' input, but I'm about to debunk it. Uh, I've seen a couple of people saying, oh, she wants a different lifestyle. She doesn't want this. Well, that's totally different than what she told Vic and what she told her mama. She told her mama before she passed, Vic is going to take care of me. She didn't want nothing else but Vic. And then Vic comes, and out the kindness of his heart, he buys Miss Christina Rogers a new headstone. Beloved mother and friend, 1956 to 2018. Daughter of Jamaica. Mother of two hearts. Protector to all. Out of the kindness of his heart, he went up there. You know how hard it is to go buy a tombstone? You got to go down to the funeral home. Hey, I need to go to plot this and this. I want to go ahead and put a new tombstone on there. Oh, that's going to... This right here? This marble? Oh, yeah. This... 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 this, this ooh. Whew. Sheesh. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and bust your head for at least 15000 for this. Gloria saying, oh, thank you, Vic. Thank you for this. I told my mom... You would take care of me. Everything from here on out would be on you. But then he says, I seen you with Tommy. That's the first thing you don't do, fellas. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. If y'all want to go far in life and be successful, successful with the women, don't bring up what they do with other niggas. Y'all ain't married. Y'all ain't together. Who cares what she doing with another guy? But he ran his mouth in his feelings, hurting, soft, weak. I seen you with Tommy. She gets mad. Now watch this. Watch how she contradicts herself. She's smiling. Thank you for the thank you for this. This upgrade here. Wait a minute. Did you do this to buy me? What? Did I do this to buy it? No, I, I got this for your mom. Just a second ago, you said thank you for it. But just because I told you I seen you with Tommy, now I was buying you. So was it not buying you at first or is only buying you now because he's seen you with Tommy and he know you out here messing around and you know, you didn't deserve this. He just spent all this money and you giving that soup to somebody else. Now you're talking about, you can't buy me. I didn't buy you. I got something for you, for your mother. You didn't get cash off of this. So how could you change up and say, now he's trying to buy you when you just accepted this gift until he said he caught your ass with Tommy. It was Thank you. Now it's, oh, you're trying to buy me. You needed to stand up for me and defend me. What do you think I'm doing? I'm here. I'm here. 
I'm here. I want to be with you. I'm showing up at the house. You told me to get a key back. I'm here. He said last week. He said last week in the house. I want to be with you. She's the one that said, oh, I can't be with you because your dad. He told her, no, I don't care about what my dad is talking about. Now she's talking about, oh, you trying to buy me. The whole time Vic was trying to be with Gloria, Gloria changed the whole topic. Gloria did this to herself. That's why she's talking about, I want something different. No, you don't. No, you don't. Vic is doing everything he can to try to be with you. He said, let's go talk. Let's leave the spot. She didn't go talk with him the first episode. She gave Tommy the soup the first episode. He said, let's go do some talking. Let's let's try to figure out where we are. He showed up at the house. He said, hey, I want to be with you. The hell with my dad. He said, I can never be with you. We don't have the same blood. You know your parents. He said, the hell with that. The hell with that. I want to be with you. Now, she's talking about Tommy. Oh, this is the type of business you do. Gloria, what is going on here? What is going on here? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Because I know I'm right. I know I'm right deep down inside. Deep, deep down inside, my heart is telling me I'm right. My mind is telling me right. And I always go with my head before I go with my heart and something is telling me I'm right. Oh, yeah. BC, Vic has no game. Vic has no game at all. Like, <laughs> He ruined this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to play it. Play it. You know what I'm saying? You got to come up to her. You go in the tombstone. She up there. You you walking up. You got to walk up smooth with your hands in your pocket. She's like, oh, you did this for me? Yeah, you know, I wanted to do something special for your mom. And I really miss her. And then she's hugging on you. She's going to probably give you a kiss. He up there talking about. Yeah, I got it. I seen you with Tommy. I'm like, what? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? You don't bring up Tommy. This is your chance to get back in there. She ain't changed the locks. What do he say? If you don't want me to come in here, change the locks. She ain't changed the locks. She still wants you to slide through. She still wants you to slide through. Y'all know I'm right. Y'all know I'm right. He don't need no game. He don't need no game. She talking about you trying to buy me. All he got to do is flash a little bit of money. He got her. If he didn't say nothing about Tommy, he bought her. And y'all know I'm right. If he didn't say anything about Tommy, him buying that headrest, he was in there. Am I right? One's for yes, two for no. Am I right? If he didn't mention Tommy and he bought that headrest, would he be back in good with her? One for yes, a two for no. I guarantee it's going to be all yes. If he didn't mention Tommy, she would have been hugging on him. They probably went out and got something to eat or drink. But no, he wanted to run his mouth about Tommy. Oh, no, Neek. It ain't no three. Neek, hey, everybody tell Neek Supreme, you started this. You brought up Gloria. And now you talk about a three indecisive. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, hey, neat. They want to know. Anna wants to know what is a three? What is a three? Gloria wants something different. Gloria wants a she wants to get away from the thugs. No, she don't. No, she don't. <laughs> oh man. La nah, la nah, la. Nah. <laughs> oh, see, look at me talking about me being difficult. <laughs> yeah, so she talking about you can't buy me. I literally just bought your ass until I mentioned Tommy. Fellas, don't mention another guy. Don't mention another guy. Or you're going to be looking like Vic, spending money that you ain't even got. Vic ain't even have all the money to go to the drug deal, but he decided to buy uh, a, a tune. Like, the, the, the uh, man, what? What? It ain't no way this dude could run the Flynn organization. He doing silly stuff. Like, you ain't have enough money. You went to a drug meet with less than the money that you needed. And now you spending money? When your dad ain't gave you a new Coke Connect, because we ain't doing Coke, we do pills. 
you out robbing people with Tommy because you ain't got no money, but you out here spending money on this man. I ain't never seen somebody this stupid. Dick is being played. And he ain't even getting no soup. Tommy ain't spending no money. Tommy getting free drinks at the bar. Tommy, the last time we seen Tommy talking to Gloria, he went to the bar and went behind the bar was making drinks. You can't even get her to come and talk to you. Man. <laughs> Man, Dina girl says she ain't changing the locks because he will cause problems for her business. What business? What business are you talking about? What business does uh, Gloria have? Because last time that I checked, <laughs> wasn't no one going to that bar. <laughs> Tommy getting free drinks. There's only like been three people in there. And she works early in the daytime. Like, man, you got to be open in the evening. And then even in the evening, she leaves the bar and goes to have sex. So she ain't got no business. <laughs> we haven't seen that bar packed the whole time we had this season going. I mean, of course, we're only four episodes in. That thing is called what? Doctor, the doctor's office or some crap like that. They ain't making no money. Yeah, she owns the bar. But the bar ain't like... The bar is equivalent to what JP got. Just isn't getting shot up. <laughs> Lights is all dim in there. What's the place called? Let me see. I don't even remember where it was. Uh, Diana, Gloria, well, she was married, but her husband died when he went on a deployment. So, I don't know if she ever got, I mean, you don't get a divorce. She's a widow because her husband died. Now, what I want to know is if she was married when he died, did he give her her uh, give her his SGLI? That's your life insurance. You get $400,000. I wonder, did he have that signed over to her? Now, that might, you know, you know, if this is what she's doing with that money, that man served his country and this is what you got. You got a bar and you were sleeping with a mobster's son and a random guy from New York City that you don't even know. Letting this man smash raw. Gloria, you are going down a hard road. You are an adult, and I don't think that you live in the, the safest of lives right now. I'm just being honest with y'all. I'm talking about she came to Tommy House right at the end. No clothes on. I'm talking about a jean jacket on straight skin. You know she walking in there, little, you know what I'm saying, scratching on the chest and stuff. But yeah, you coming over, time to smash two times in three days. Like, this is the life you live in? That man died. You got all his insurance money from the military, bought a bar that's going up under, sleeping with the mob, sleeping with Tommy. Man. You know, I'd be rolling over in my grave if I was her husband. Like, damn. I was on a deployment, and look what I got. Look what I got. You looking down from heaven like, glad we didn't have no kids because, man, my kids would be in a hell of a mess. Man, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Dina, Dr. Parker's office. That's the bar name. It ain't making no money. They talking about, uh, we need to have a meeting in a neutral place. Oh, we can have it at Dr. Parker's office. You know, Walter Flynn's like, Dr. Parker, what the hell is that? Oh, it's the bar that uh, Gloria owns. He's like, oh, yeah, we could do that. I know they ain't open. They ain't making no business. They ain't got no customers in there. Straight after a hard day's uh, hustling. Look what she got on. We're going to call her out, too. We gonna call her out because y'all y'all think I don't be noticing this. She got this jacket on. Mm-hmm. She got this jean, whatever it is. I don't know if it's a whole, you know what I'm saying? She got that jean on. Came straight to Tommy House. Y'all see what she got on? Yeah, it wasn't it, it may have been an off day, but she need to be open 24-7. She came straight to Tommy House in the same. 
the same thing she had on. She said, I'm going to take this off in the car and go up there with no top on, no draws on. I'm telling you, like, hey, man, let, let, can, I, can I take a shower first? You know what I'm saying? I've been out, you know what I'm saying? Me and Vic, we done robbed some people. Can, can I take a shower first? Matter of fact, come take one with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm smelling that whiff. <laughs> <laughs> let me chill man because i told y'all glory is my my new crush ever since carrie died i had to move on you know what i'm saying just like she moved on from vic to tommy i moved on from carrie to gloria <laughs> blaine true said they look like the same jacket janard had on man it, let me find out she running around with janard too <laughs> diana said poor vic we didn't see him get any yeah, man, he was getting that way, way, you know what I'm saying, back in the day, like last week, probably the day before Tommy showed up, he was probably smashing in. Hey, Rich, you know how it is. You know how it is. Walter Flynn said, Dr. Parker's office. Oh, yeah, we can, we can go in that bar. Look at this street. This whole street look ran down. They ain't making no money over here. I mean, you've been Dr. Parker's office is someplace like, you know, um, it'd be, you know, saying like three or four guys that grew up in the neighborhood and it used to be something else, but they still go there for the nostalgia feel. Ain't nobody going in there. Addisville said glow gets around. I hope not. I hope we all got a pass, but I hope. Before me, it's just like Tommy's the last one. Gloria, please just tell me. You, know what I'm you told me you need me. Why did you leave me all alone? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to sing to Gloria. <laughs> Lulu's coat. Hey, Lulu did have that coat, didn't he? <laughs> that brother was clean. She is soup kitchen. Man, Damn, Gloria. Uh-oh. Is that Janard's coat? <laughs> nah, he's got the fur down at the bottom. But that's it. That's what 2 Chains was saying when he said, I got the mink and the his and hers. You know what I'm saying? My boy Janard out here with the Mary on. He said, you know what? We'll get the matching coats. He's saying, me and you. Me and you. They go for the soup, man. They must. They must. I'm not really a big fan of soup. Unless it's something on the secret menu I don't know about. But I'm not a big fan of soup. Gloria got Mo third. Well, at least I'm higher on the list. With Carrie, I was number nine. And I didn't even get to get to that. Monet finished that off a little bit too early before I could even get a chance. So now I got to work with Gloria, but I got to stay out the way because Tommy a pistol whip somebody. Vic, I could probably take Vic. Vic scary. Tommy is the one you got to worry about. Do I think that Elisa Marie is going to kill? Nah, I don't even think we're going to see Elisa Marie no more. I mean, excuse me. I, it wouldn't be. There wouldn't be anything because what's she going to do? Confront Tommy for killing her dad. But you know what I'm saying? There wouldn't really be anything for her. And she's young. You got to remember Lisa Marie was what, 10 maybe. So we still, you know, at least eight years before she's even stepping out and doing anything, let alone coming out to Chicago. Because who she lived with now is her uncle. Was it her uncle that he took her over? Yeah, I think that she's like she with her uncle. So now we wouldn't see Lisa Marie anymore. Vic is that poor guy from the Chappelle show watching Lysol. Hey, Lysol was in there. <laughs> she said, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to hang out with Lysol. And then they had that damn night vision on the damn camcorder Lysol. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, I mean, Lisa Marie, she... She's a kid, and it's her aunt she went to stay. I remember it was either her aunt or her uncle, but, you know. Yeah, I don't, I, we're not going to see her anymore, I don't think. 
Oh yeah, two thirty nine. All right, I'm um, I'm gonna show the trailer three, and then after that we can ask questions for like the last ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes. Let me see. Where is it at? No, my bad. Episode four trailer. Yeah, I can see Vic uh, looking through the window, spying on Tommy and crying. Hey, I mean, he was looking through the window last week. He wasn't crying. He hit that cigarette, though. He said, you know what? You know what? I'm going to ball out on this dude, Tommy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go buy a headstone for, for my girl, man. That's that's on me, Gloria. Nothing. Easy easy 15 piece. I'm going to buy a head. Like, what? That's how you're trying to get back in her good graces? Buying it, man. <laughs> Please. You better off spending like two thousand dollars just sending some flowers to the bar and just hopefully that works. If not, don't spend no more money, fellas. Don't go, don't go in your pockets and hurt your pockets. If she's giving you the hint that she don't want you around, leave it alone. After she told me to get a key back, I would first of all I wouldn't even accept the key in the first place. But she would have said, "Give me the key back. Here's the key. I'm done with her. We stop by his business. We can be cool, but don't don't be like Vic people." Don't be like Vic. <laughs> All right, now here go uh, the trailer for episode four. I did a breakdown on it too. Uh, the what's next video. Oh, and ladies, don't do it either. My bad. I know I talk to the gentlemen a lot because you know I like to look out for my young black brothers. I want to get them to thrive in the world. But ladies, don't be just. <laughs> Be careful with who you spend your money on. They don't get caught up in it. At the end of the day, you're an adult, and no one can really, I mean, they can. You can get manipulated by people, but for the most part, do your research. <laughs> do your research. It's just like going to the bank and trying to get a loan. They not about to be manipulated. Nine times ten, I'm like, uh, nigga, this credit ain't nowhere near good enough. What you could do is go to the payday loans and get you a damn check, but you ain't getting no loan from us. Yeah, so don't get manipulated or tricked. Here we go. Episode four. Boo! Someone throw a tomato at Neek. She said, I'm allergic to spending money on men. Well, good thing I got that allergen pill over here. You know what I'm saying? You be good. You pop one of these. Go trick off. <laughs> go trick off. Because if I'm buying a gift, your gift that you give me got to be at least 30% of what I done bought. I don't do all that. I buy a computer, you buy me a portable speaker crap. I had that happen one time. I had to look at them and say, what? That MacBook was $1,800. This portable speaker, $299. I can get that shit myself. <laughs> I can get that myself. You better, hey, you go need a portable speaker and something else to go with that thing. Hell, you give me a PlayStation 5, that's only $500. You can't get $500. I need to reevaluate uh, re who I'm dealing with. If you can't put up a little bit of money, come on now. Oh, come on now. Hey, listen to this. My sister is in here and she'll tell you I am truthful with what I say. Now, I don't mind spending money on my lady, but, but, a nigga ain't going broke doing it. I manage my money very, very carefully. And if I buy you something that's two thousand dollars, I'm gonna need something that's at least seven fifty. Don't be coming up here with no crap talk about man. Look, this this how to be. Don't have me coming in. This is my gift right here. It is about. Mm, I haven't opened it up yet, but it's about twenty five hundred dollars worth of stuff. And then you coming to me talking about Merry Christmas? Here's a new hat. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. This funky ass head. I got 10 of them. <laughs> I got 10 of them. <laughs> I got 10 of them. I got a scully. It's It was 75 degrees outside. And I got a scully on today. You talk about you go a hat. You better buy me some tank tops to go with that hat. I better be getting a fit to go with that hat. I want some love too. Now, I'm not telling you to go spend the same match what I spent, but you better come up off something. You better come up off something. Break a man off. 
break a man on. I'm coming up to you. Like, we can go all day. We can go all day. I'm coming up to you. Here go this old ass MacBook I got. You know what I'm saying? I got the touch. I got the touch screen HP here. I'm bringing this to you. Damn, what you spend for that? I said, oh, a pretty penny. Merry Christmas. Oh, I wanted to get you something too. You bring me this raggedy ass fifth gen MacBook. We're gonna have problems. We're gonna have problems because what we're gonna do is you gonna use this raggedy ass MacBook. I'm gonna use the touch screen HP. That's what we're gonna do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> oh, look at my sister. You ain't met the right one, Neek. You ain't met a Hey, everyone in the chat right now, cover your ears. Everyone in the chat right now, except for Neek, cover your ears. You hear what my sister said, Neek? You ain't met the right one yet. You ain't met a nigga like me. <laughs> now everyone else can open your eye. I mean, open your ears up. <laughs> Let's jump into this damn trailer. Y'all got me wilding. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got me wilding. <laughs> Don't show up with that MacBook. You might as well keep that thing. I got. I'll go get my own shit. <laughs> Here we go. Trailer four <laughs> for PowerBook Four. What's the point? I want that pipeline in Chicago. Once you start it, it can't be undone. I need you to have strong tongue, not low. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, of course, we see that Tommy and um, Diamond, they about to get they about to get a little bit closer. And he's telling them, hey, if we go behind Walter's back, it could get ugly in these streets. It could get ugly in these streets. So we got to be prepared if we really going to do this. Because you heard Jannar said, Walter, they killed nine of the CBI members. They killed nine CBI members. Nine CBI members. Not one, not two, nine. That's a basketball team with reserve basketball players. So, you know, if they getting down like that, then she, let me just step back. Let me step back. Kendall says, or what if the tables were turned and she felt the same way? How's she going to feel the same way? <laughs> How's she going to feel the same way? Vic got her that tombstone as a gift. Her gift in return going to be that re refurbished box. Hey, let's keep it PG here. She going to give him the bottom of the soup bowl. You know, all the soup that when you 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 eating and the soup that fall off the spoon back into the bowl, that's what Vic is going to get. <laughs> that's what Vic is going to get. Donna said Vic likes what Tommy is talking about and willing to work with CBI. The father going to be pissed. Yeah, so Vic... He works with the black people. We've seen him working with Jannard already, so he doesn't have an issue with it. He worked with Tommy, even though he knows that Tommy is messing with Gloria, not to the extent that they have a sex, but he knows that Tommy is working with him. So he said, man, I'll put all that to the side as long as it's us getting some money. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what you see with the younger people. And that deal is pretty sweet. Y'all can move pills in the south. We can move our coke up north. You get 10% of everything I sell up there. We'll get 10% of everything you sell down here. That's just going to make more money. And Tommy's getting 5% of everything both ways. Like, this is a win-win for everybody. <laughs> Assuming there's any soup left after Tommy is done, man. I mean, shoot. It ain't no telling. It ain't no telling. Because let me tell you something. Gloria ain't going backwards. She ain't going backwards. Because after, after Tommy gets done with that soup bowl, I don't really eat soup, so we're going to wash that soup bowl out, and we're going to turn it into a cereal bowl. I eat some cereal now. You know what I mean? When that cereal bowl get to me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like Cherie said, like Reese Bolton said, Gloria done met the right one. We're going to get her about that dope game. We're going to – we definitely ain't refinancing that bum-ass bar. What we're going to do is <laughs> – 
we're gonna take out the equity in that bar we're gonna get us a decent place and then we're gonna flip that and we're gonna get the hell up out of chicago and go somewhere where it's warm i already got it planned out for us glory i, I dream about this stuff that's what we're gonna do Vic may be a psychopath, not just a sociopath. Vic has is uh Vic has is slowly Vic has is slowly boiling and planning. He may kill his ex-girlfriend. Uh now I don't think he'll kill Gloria. Gloria's gonna be around for a while. Um okay, so everybody's talking about Gloria. I don't think. One of the theories is we think Gloria may be a cop. If she's undercover something, nothing's going to happen to her. And she's the new love interest of Tommy. It would be pointless to kill her off because then what will we do in season two? You see what I'm saying? So you got to look at it like that from the writer's aspect. You're always going to have to have a love interest in the show. Of course, Claudia is going to have her thing on the side. But since Tommy is the main character, they got to be able to interact with someone, you know, saying as far as a relationship type. So she may get exposed and has to lay low, but Tommy knows where she is or something of that nature. But I don't think anything's going to physically happen to her. I mean, I could see Vic maybe snatching her up and people saying, oh, my God, Vic abused her. And all he did was hold her hand and tell her to chill out. But we'll see. We'll see. But I don't think anything more than like Vic snatching her up, like putting her against the wall or something. I don't see anything else. like Nothing significant happening to her. Miss Nurse, I don't hate the bar. I just know financially. That's what my degree is in. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm actually in the finance class right now, and I was doing all that depreciation and all that crap. I hate it. But I know that that bar, yeah, you got the markup on the bottles, but you got to be selling bottles. It's not like she's in Vegas where she got the damn markup on that Henny from a, a $60 bottle to $300, $400. She got a bottle of E&J in there talking about yeah we got the finest you going in there she pouring up that dry ass e and j you don't want that like what i don't want that you're not gonna make no money in that bar and we got to separate ourselves from the flynn family these niggas is holding meetings in the bar i guarantee walter didn't say we're gonna pay you some money they looked at claudia i mean they looked at gloria and said get your ass out of here we about to hold a meeting her ass walked up out of there and then came back when the meeting was over Man, come on now. That bar ain't making no money. That bar ain't making no money. Y'all know me. Come on now. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all I go to the strip club with $40 and I come back with 30 Come on now. That bar ain't making no money. I'm going to tell you how to save that bread. You know what I'm saying? She ain't got no food in there. She's selling soup in the... You better get some wings and some fries or something. Try to get the younger crowd in there. Hey, go to what is Chicago University out there? You better put some flyers up. Hey, y'all, you come out here. You know what I'm saying? Drink up a little bit. <laughs> you say what? What soup? All right, we're gonna try something a little different. Give me a, give me a four, give me a four. If you go to the bar to have some soup, or give me a six. If you would go to the bar to have some chicken and some drink. So a four is for drinks and soup. A six is for drink and chicken. Which one would you do? Pretty doll face at eight. <laughs> Pretty doll face at eight. Ain't no one going to no damn bar. Let me get the finest chicken noodle soup you got. No, matter of fact, scratch that. Let me get that. Uh, let me get that tomato soup. Nigga, you talking about putting tomato sauce and boiling it with some water? Tomato soup? Hey, bro, we don't sell that crap here. You can only sell a bowl of soup for what? 30 cents? That's some shit at a soup kitchen. What they feed the homeless? The homeless get better than soup. You talking about selling some soup? What? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Some soup. Hey, you coming in? Hold on, I got y'all. Y'all know me, man. You coming in there? And it's, this is it's it's cold in Chicago right now. You see how they dress? You coming in there? 
talking about. You working hard as hell, too. Working your tail off. You coming in there talking about, whew, man, whew, what y'all got? Whew. Yeah, let me get some. Uh, let me get a, a Jameson on the rocks. Now, matter of fact, scratch that, scratch that. Let me get a Hennessy on the rocks. Uh, y'all got some wings? What y'all? What y'all got? Any burgers? Oh no, we got some soup. Some soup. Some soup. The hell I'm gonna do with some goddamn soup? A nigga is hungry. I'm an adult. It was eleven in the damn morning. Talking about Tommy, you want some soup? No, the hell I don't want no soup. I just drove my ass from New York City. For some fucking food and some drink. You talking about some goddamn soup? Who's the manager? Who owns this place? Oh, I own it. Well, you need to change this damn menu right now. I'm from New York City. We don't eat no damn soup. I got Tim's on. Eat no damn soup. I'm out here trying to trying to make a living. Trying to make a living. You talking about some damn soup? Well, no damn soup. It's 11 in the morning. She talking about, I can read people. So she gave him a, a, a drink straight. Well, if you can read me, you can tell that this damn stomach is rumbling. And that soup ain't going to do nothing but run through me. What am I, 90? A bowl of soup? My dad is, what am I? My daddy's 72 years old. His ass eat some soup. He'll eat some soup with them damn saltine crackers. I don't want no damn soup. I got to move some bricks through the city. I don't want no soup. I want some chicken. I want some burgers. Y'all ain't got breakfast food. What? Soup. She talking about, hey, it's the soup of the day. She was behind the bar too. <laughs> she was in there. Yeah, we got soup, the soup of the day. Like, who the fuck are you talking about some soup of the day? I don't want no damn soup. Now you sitting in here, I'm texting my dog why he hoop. Man, hey dog, what's up, bro? Man, I'm at the damn bar. Oh damn, you you drinking? Shit, I'm about to. I'm about to buy a bottle because this motherfucker talking about giving me some soup. Some soup. Some soup. I want everyone to text one of your friends and say, hey, tomorrow do you want to go out and get some soup? I guarantee them like soup. Someone text their friend right now and ask them, do they want to go get some soup? I guarantee they're gonna look at you like, what the hell are you talking about? Some soup. Some soup. Kendall said it's cold in Chicago. It's cold in Alaska, but they ain't selling soup as their primary fucking food. <laughs> Shit. It's cold in New York City. You think it ain't cold where Tommy came from? You think Tommy's going out? Man, you know what? Matter of fact, let me let me try something. Neek. I'm talking to Neek the Supreme right now because she allergic to spending on dudes. So a nigga like me, I spend some money. Neek, I'm talking directly to Neek Supreme, the one allergic to spending money on guys. Hey, Neek, look, I'm going to fly you out to San Francisco this weekend. I got reservations at the soup kitchen. Me, you, one bowl of soup, two spoons. We doing it? Yes or no, Neek? I'm, we waiting on Neek's answer. We going to get soup. I got reservation at the best soup house. I want you to wear something sexy. Put some sugar on it, cause we going to get some soup. Let's see what Neek says. Is Neek going to accept this? Is Neek going to accept this? No, 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 no. Don't influence her, Anna. Don't influence her, Anna. Don't influence her, Anna. Don't influence her. We gonna see if Neek want to go on this date, cause we talking soup. We talking soup. I'm talking. I'm talking the big bowl, I'm talking the big bowl. You know what I'm saying? The one where they got the big ass scoop, and we gonna, be... yeah, yeah. Oh no, Neek, I ain't super cheap. This the big bowl. This is the dollar twenty five bowl. Now I could have been cheap and got us the two thirty cents bowl, but I got us the big one. You know what I'm saying? The one that Grandma stirring with the two hands. You know what I'm saying? We stirring the soup with two hands. Yeah, Neek, we ain't being cheap. We doing, it's reservations. No, 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 it's reservations. It's a long list of homeless people waiting to get in this soup kitchen, and I done reserved it for us. As a matter of fact, I reserved the whole soup kitchen, so all the fold-up tables are ours. We can sit wherever we want. 
We could even bring in our own fold up chairs. Are we gonna go on this and get this suit? Mm hmm. Are we gonna go get this suit? Because I'm doing, I'm doing everything you asking for. You don't want to spend no money on me. I'm making sure I, I got you to find us a suit. <laughs> Nick still hasn't even answered, y'all. She hasn't even answered. I I gave her a uh, booked a flight. You know what I'm saying? I got reservations at the best soup kitchen in the Bay Area. I got the biggest bowl. I read it out the whole place. And she don't even want to do it. And that's in San Francisco. This is Chicago. San Francisco is like 10 times more expensive than Chicago. So I'm telling you guys from experience that that bar ain't making no money. <laughs> that bar ain't making no money. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Miss V. She said no. <laughs> oh, Miss Nurse, why? It, it, it's a round trip. It's a round trip. Don't even worry about it. hotel yours, hotel room booked, flight booked. You got a lot of yourself. All you got to do is go on this reservation with me. You know what I'm saying? We go get the we get that soup. I'm talking about the only thing I ask for though is when we get done with that soup, you say. Oh, Mo, what are you doing? There's soup on your lip. That's all I asked for. <laughs> but no, they won't accept that date to that soup. And I'm telling you, they don't nobody want to go to that bar and get no damn soup. <laughs> it's a round trip, Miss Nurse. It's all expenses paid. You know what I'm saying? The bowl of soup, everything. Oh man, how we even get on buying? Oh yeah, y'all asked me about that bar. Uh-huh. Look at this. Look at this. Hold on, y'all. The best soup in Chicago. Uncle Mike's Place. Cafe. Mustache. Mustache. Soup Box. Pick Me Up Cafe. Captain Nemo's. First Slice Pie Cafe. Caesar's Killer Margaritas. Now that, now, look. Look what Caesar, look at the soup that they offer him. We know you're... Most likely visit Caesars for the tequila heavy killer margaritas. But have you ever tried the Sopa de Fido? It combines tomato and chicken broth with angel hair pasta and a caliantro garnish for a taste that's simple, filling, and delicious. I know she ain't doing this. I know she ain't got this at Dr. Parker's. Uh, Bier, Bieria, Zacharagas, whatever it is. Jeans, Sausage Shop, Paul's. Manny's Cafeteria. 11 Cities Diner, Lee Bouchon. I don't see no Dr. Parker on here. I don't let me know if y'all see Dr. Parker. Cause she ain't even on the top. I thought this is the top 10. This is like the top 100. <laughs> do <laughs> do y'all see that? Do y'all do y'all see it? <laughs> And it says, show us your hat collection. Nah, I got a lot of hats, man. I got, like, an assortment of different color scullies and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Any color scully you want, I got a, uh, that color scully. I don't really... A lot of my hats are a little uh, bigger because I used to have dreads and I had braids and stuff. But, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got, I got a nice hat selection. <laughs> but we don't see Dr. Parker's anywhere on here. Now, uh... A uh, shy girl, if you in here still, have you been to any of these places? This just looks completely disgusting. This, I mean, listen to the name, Gene Sausage Shop. I wouldn't even think about going in there. But this Caesar's Killer Margaritas, that looks like a place that I might attend. <laughs> that looks like a place I might attend. Donna said, uh... I'm Chi Town Soup and High Cocoa. Hit real, hit real different when it's 17 degrees outside. 
Yeah, when it's 17 degrees outside, hopefully she got some heat on the inside of that motherfucker. I'm not eating on the porch or on the sidewalk. <laughs> when I go in there, I want to be able to take my jacket off. I want to get comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming in there. Oh, whew, damn, it's a little cold in here. Yeah, you know, we don't turn the heat on until about three. Why? We ain't making that much money. You're like, damn, I got to bundle up in here. Let me go get my mittens out. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't even got nothing to do with this shit. Y'all got me ranting about Gloria in this damn soup kitchen. That's basically what it is. That man Walter said, "Hey, call Gloria, tell her get her ass up out of there. We're gonna use that for a meet." Matter of fact, set it up real tight. Put a chair, put a table in the middle of the, the damn thing. We're not gonna sit in the booth. I want to set it up and make it look cool. Now, who went in there and set this thing up? I know Walter didn't do it. His ass a coffin. Look at this. Hey, go into that bar and set it up for me. I'm like, man, let's just sit in the booth, bro, and just bring two chairs over. What, what, what are we doing this for? You making it seem like you the principal, and this the vice principal, and like your, <laughs> what did you call him? The, uh, what was Carrie? Carrie was like a counselor, and they coming in here, Tommy, like, man, what's going on, y'all? Well, we need to talk to you about the finances of this soup kitchen. They ain't making no money. It's dark as hell in here. Can't see nothing. You got to turn the brightness on your phone all the way up. Man, y'all tripping. I'm pretty sure Tommy's going to smash both white girls. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with Claudia. I think she's going to stand strong. And uh, like I said, they might get close to kissing, but she'll push them off and say, you know, I don't I don't do that. And it's all business anyway. But if I did like guys, you know, saying you'd be on the top of my list or something stupid like that, they call it flirting. But I'm like, man, this is just some shit white people do. <laughs> no offense to my white friends, but I'm like, man, this is really some white people shit. <laughs> like, uh, this isn't flirting to me. Like, if you're not interested in me, just let me know. And all right, I keep it going. <laughs> Talking about, yeah, man. Y'all got me hot. Like a cat. Mm. Yeah, look at that. And they got a raggedy table, too. It's not even like a sturdy table. Said Gloria's uh bar is a front for laundry and money. Shit, it gotta be something. But as soon as they pull an audit on this, they be like, first of all, your books are cooked. <laughs> Cause I'm looking around, it ain't no way you making any kind of bread in here. And you know, like you gotta look at the lights too. That's one thing. When you go into buildings, the lights she got are old and outdated. These aren't energy saving lights, these are just dim ass yellow lights. You know what I'm saying? When you go to your grandma's house, you go on that back porch for anybody to go in the country. I know Sharice is in here. She know we go to grandma's house. They try to put a light outside so you can see a little bit, but it's all yellow and they got the moss and everything up in there. Like, damn, grandma, we can't see nothing out here. She talking about, no, nah, you be good. Like, man, grandma, for real. This is Virginia. You step out my grandma's house, you go literally five feet to the left. It's woods. And I'm talking about dark as hell. Grandma, you need a better light out here. And Grandma be on the porch smoking that cigarette, playing solitaire. I'm like, damn, Grandma, it's like 10 at night. You can see out here. She got the glasses on. Grandma, I miss you, Grandma. That was fun. I used to go out there to Virginia. Uh, JT, we don't know who uh, Claudia's girlfriend Connect is. She's just saying that she got them. But she's saying they're diet pills. So I don't know if it's really... She said they were diet pills and the FDA approved it. So are they diet pills that they got and they're just breaking them down? You know what I'm saying? Like they could buy those diet pills and then whatever they do, they mix the chemicals. It could be something like that. <laughs> oh, Anna said outfit number three. Nah, it's not outfit number three. I just didn't want to put that scully on the back of my head. Like, man, y'all know I get to sweating. I sweat easily. So I was like, man. I don't want to embarrass, I mean, not embarrass me, 
but I didn't want y'all to have to suffer and look at my hair because I'm getting a haircut this week. So I didn't want y'all to have to look at that. And I didn't want to have to have a scully on because it was getting hot on the back of my neck. So I put a hat on. <laughs> I told y'all grandma had that one spotlight. And then they had the nerve to put up. And shout out to my people. They country. But they built the damn. They built a. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't even call it a deck. They built a little like sunroom, like screen room in the back. Man, that shit was man. Look, you know how that that floor was that Tommy kicked in in the kitchen, like this. Man, you walked out there. You had to like make sure you walked on the slats that went across. Your ass will fall through that thing. And it was so bad, man. My grandma house. I mean, I know my grand my granddaddy made that house. So I mean, I I'm not talking bad about it like that. But I'm just saying, God damn. We used to have to walk across the dam, like literally like a hundred yards to my uncle house. My mom and dad used to stay at my uncle house. All the kids would stay at my grandma house. My uncle house had AC and uh, we had three cousins that lived over there, Brittany, Whitney, and then my little cousin, Sam. They stayed there. We had to walk over to a house with water jugs, fill them things up in the middle of the night, walk back and put them in the freezer because we couldn't drink the water out of my grandma house. We go over there. Brittany and Whitney, they in the house. They jamming and shit. We could see them in the window. They laughing at us. My mom and dad in there, they kicked up like they rich. Mm, we got AC. We going over to grandma's house. His aunt's crawling on us and shit when we sleeping. Man. <laughs> Man, look, that country life ain't no joke. And then Sharice, Sharice, she got a little bit older, so she would go over her mama house. She wouldn't come to Virginia with us. Me and Ann out there thugging it. Talking about we out there thugging thugging it hours and hours it didn't matter like you know modern day they say hey stay in or out the house at grandma's house it didn't matter if you were in or out nigga it felt hot inside it felt hot outside it wasn't no in and out it was just live now you go over to my aunt and uncle's house well i'm gonna say that was my uncle that was my uncle larry house you go over there they got ac they kick it they got cable she is grandma house it was eight niggas in a room with a bunk bed a bed on the side and then up under the bunk bed was a mattress and we would have to go out there for two weeks every summer sleep on them damn mattresses <laughs> don't get me started on my childhood um babe we were uh we were in amherst virginia out by lynchburg yeah we was far away from y'all 757 y'all was over by the beach and stuff we wasn't we was over there in Lynchburg, pretty much. I'm talking about the woods. Man, I used to get, I used to be so scared. I used to be so scared going to my grandma's house. You had to go in the bathroom in the back of the house. Boy, you go back there. You trying to like turn the kitchen light on because when you go back there, it's a little bitty light bulb up there. You got to go back there to use that bathroom. And then it's just like a screen. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no whole window. It wasn't a window you pulled in. It was just a fucking screen. Bugs on there. You hear something outside. I'm like, shit. You trying to pee and stuff. You scared as hell. And then you go back and get in the bed. It's all y'all in there. It's hot as hell. Little cousins laying on you. Man. <laughs> Renee said, I went to VA. All I saw was water. You didn't go to VA. You went to the coast. Go to VA. <laughs> go to VA. The NVA. Don't go to the coast. Go in VA. It's going to be woods and stuff. When you leave, we got to do tick checks. This ain't even got nothing to do with it, but we got a spider right here. So, hey, getting spider bites, all that nonsense. All that nonsense. And then, let me tell y'all something. And I respect my father for this. Because I know how expensive shit can get. And if I was a dad with one, two, three. Well, I'm even going to take it back to when Tanika used to go with us. If I was a father and it was me, my wife, so that's two, my two daughters, my two sons. Oh, I'm not buying no plane ticket. This nigga used to make us drive from Kansas City, Missouri to Virginia. That shit would take 24 hours. 24 hours, people. 24 fucking hours in a car. You and that motherfucker just riding. It ain't no, are we there yet? Because that nigga turn around, shut the fuck up. We ain't there yet. I'm like, damn, dad. I just asked where we at. 
<laughs> we used to pack the, the cooler up with the food stuff. Damn, yeah, y'all got me goddamn ranting about life when I was younger. <laughs> Damn, we used to go through it. And then we got a little bit of money, you know what I'm saying? We finally got a piece of the pie. My dad bought a truck. He used to put so much junk in the back, but then he put a, like a mattress on top of it. We used to ride the back of the truck. That was cool, though. That was luxury. Divine. But, yeah. In the, the, in the rent, in the beginning... It makes you appreciate a parent because, I mean, like, you look at her. She's out here struggling until she can get where she got to get. But, you know what I'm saying? That's how it was with us. 24 hours, hopping the whip. Ride out to Virginia for two weeks. Riding two, 24 hours just to get out there and sweat for two weeks straight. And then have to go to church on Sunday. Boy, when I tell you I hated going to church on Sunday out there in Virginia, bro, they went to this little bitty ass church too. Talking about all brick. <laughs> all brick. No AC, straight ceiling fan. I'm talking about the Lord was in there with you. The Lord was in there with you. He was sitting right there. Uh huh. Jesus put his wool on your back. Like you were walking, his wool was touching him. It was so hot in there. <laughs> uh it was it was it was well we were kids so it wasn't really rough you know what I'm saying they get on that grill and stuff that was cool but you know what I'm saying i'm just saying it was hey man life wasn't always sweet for us growing up man life was not always sweet darkwing duck says sweating like a sauna hell you wish you was in the sauna you going out there Man, you didn't have readily available water. And like we played, we played hide and go seek at 10 in the morning. We played hide and go seek at one in the afternoon. We played hide and go seek at four in the afternoon. We played hide and go seek at eight at night. We played hide and go seek at 10 at night. Why? Because we didn't have shit else to play. <laughs> we climbed the trees. We might dog. We had a basketball court. They had a basketball. Now they didn't get the basketball court till we turned like a teenager. But they had a basketball court. It wasn't no gravel. It was just straight dirt. We out there hooping in dirt, man. They got bricks for the sideline. I'm talking about you try to save the ball. You sprain your damn ankle on the damn rock by the sideline, man. And then it was like all dirt driveway too. So whenever somebody would drive, it's like the kids had to take a break because you'd be inhaling nothing but dust. <laughs> I ain't been back to Virginia since damn 2000, shit, like 2010, and I ain't going back, damn it. <laughs> I ain't going back. Dame said that creates the best ballers. Well, what the hell happened to me? What well, what happened to me? Now we just talking. I mean, this ain't, everyone that's new in here, we talk about power for like the first three hours, and after that, I just go on rants. So definitely hit that like button. I'm going to stay on here for a little bit because I ain't got nothing to do. It's my final week of classes. So I ain't got nothing to look forward to this week. So I can talk a little bit with y'all. Y'all can ask me any question, any other TV shows. We could do that. But in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and get up off of this thing. So if y'all have anything you want to ask, go ahead. What the hell? Man. Life is, you know what I'm saying? We we upgraded, you know what I'm saying? I can afford, I can afford, you know what I'm saying, multiple hats now. When I was growing up, I had two hats. Let me tell you what two hats I had. I had a Phoenix Suns hat, because that was my dad's team, because of Charles Barkley. And I had a baseball hat from the, when I played baseball at the YMCA. Those are the two hats I had growing up. When I tell y'all, we were very humbled as children. Sharice would tell you, and I understand, because my dad had a family of five. Sharice, Aunt, me, Tanika, we'd all get $100 the week before school starts because in Missouri, the last weekend of August, there's a tax. Well, not in Missouri, in Kansas, they have a school tax where you can go out and buy clothes. I know I know they still do this, don't they? But you could go out the week before school starts and you could buy clothes with no tax. We wasn't going to the regular stores. We drove like 40 minutes to Leavenworth, the military base. We go in there. We all get $100. You get a hundred dollar bill. You could buy whatever the hell you wanted for school. 
not for recreational use, for a school with that hundred dollars. And that's what we got. And you got one pair of tennis shoes that wasn't factored into your hundred dollars. So you get a hundred dollars worth of clothes and probably be like two pair of pants, four or five shirts, six shirts, maybe some socks because you got to get underwear. They made us pay for our underwear and stuff out of that hundred dollars. And I respect that, you know, saying people, oh, kids shouldn't do that. But it actually taught us, you know, saying to manage your money. So you had to pay for your socks, your drawers, all your clothes. And then they buy the shoes on your own. And then you get your second pair of shoes at Christmas. Nine times out of ten, your second pair of shoes is either uh, your second pair of shoes or your sports shoes. So you you get your school shoes that you wear every single day because you only got one pair of school, uh, shoes, except for Sharice. Sharice Bolton had J's in high school. Sharice Bolton had Nikes. Sharice Bolton had more than us. We didn't get J's. My dad hated Michael Jordan. Sharice had J's. I remember she had the right, white and red uh, twills. I said, damn, them clean. They were girl shoes, but I always tried to put my feet in them whenever she would come over. Like, damn, I can't wear these yet. Yeah, it was my sister. You know what I'm saying? No, they were the boys shoes, but she had, you know, she had smaller feet. I was like, damn, I'm going to wear these one day. I'm going to sneak them to school. <laughs> but that's how we live. One pair of shoes that you wore every single day. And then you get a pair of shoes to hoop in. And I just told Dame I wasn't no hooper. So my dad buying me basketball shoes. I'm like, the hell with that. I'm going to be sitting my ass on the bench anyway. So shit, I'm going to wear these shoes to school. He, Don't wear them to school. Don't want to play, to play basketball in. Like, damn, dad. You see me sitting on that bench. Let me wear these motherfuckers to school. <laughs> Let me get fresh a little bit. I can have two, you know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of my shoes and clothes are black because, you know, we didn't have a lot. So I wanted to make sure I could at least match everything. So I always get black shoes. Well, now I get multiple shoes, but get black shoes. I can wear them with everything. You see Tommy wearing black? Every time we see Tommy in black. <laughs> JT said we would eat mustard or mayo sandwiches. I mean, we had like, we had like, uh, I mean, we ate bologna. Hey, if Trill in here, we had glizzies growing up. You put that motherfucking hot dog, boil a hot dog. Shit. Hey, if you wanted to survive, man, you had to do what you had to do. I wish I still had, see, look at Sharice bragging. She had J's and stuff. We didn't get none of that. We didn't get none of that. None of that. But then when I got in high school, it was cool because, you know, me and my dad wore the same size shoes. So I would wear some of his shoes because he would get himself all the cool shit. <laughs> now saying we would let, let's get something straight. My parents never had us dressed like bums or anything. One day I went to school wrinkled. This is a true story. My cousin that helped out with Bel Air when they shot the original pilot in Kansas City, me and him, we were in school together because a lot of my cousins, they moved in with us. because My family were real close. So we went to school one day and my mom called my dad. This is a true story. My mom called my dad and said, the boys went to school wrinkled. I swear, my dad came up to the school, checked us out, took us home, made us take our clothes off, iron them, and then took us back to school. That nigga did not play when it came to, my dad, he the king of starch. He's 72, he still starched them pants up, but he took us from school. I'm like, damn, dad. Shit. Okay, I'm a little wrinkled. My eyes be red. My lips a little dark. Okay, Dad. <laughs> oh, man, it was good times, though. I go on and on about my childhood. Yeah, Kendall, you saying oh my, but that's why I'm so grateful about stuff. And when I see people wasting money, like on that bar, why? You could be putting that money into something else. We could actually downsize this bar, get you a spot that can hold about 100 patrons until you start making some money, generating some revenue. Oh, Sharice, make sure you join in Friday when we had a live about that. I seen uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of breakdowns of that too. But yeah, if y'all don't have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here. We got almost three and a half hours, you know what I'm saying? What do you mean you grew up opposite of that Kindle? You had you had a uh, 
Kendo had money. What's that little girl saying? Who he got money? Uh, Snowfall lives will be Snowfall comes out on Wednesday, so Snowfall lives will be on Thursdays. Friday lives are Bel Air. Sunday is Power. I'm doing a Euphoria live tomorrow, so I'm uh I might watch. I'm lying. I'm gonna watch the episode in the morning. So Euphoria live would be tomorrow night. Damn, All American come back on tomorrow too, and Homecoming. I'm not doing no lives for those unless I you know say get a lot of people ask about it, but. Here's the schedule. Monday's Euphoria, Wednesday's, I mean, Monday Euphoria, Thursday's Snowfall, Friday's Bel Air, Sunday's of Power. Oh, I like, uh, Ron, I like Bel Air. I like what they're doing with that. I, the spin that they have on it to turn it into a drama, and then they iterate a couple of the old episodes into each one. I, I like I like the direction that they're going in. I don't know. I wish they would have kept Rashad alive a little bit longer because now I don't know what the dilemma is going to be. I might have something um, planned for Friday. You know, shout out to Aunt Viv. I hope hopefully within this week she got a couple of paintings done. You know. Oh, I still got. Hey, this is still up for auction. The first Bel Air picture. Uncle Phil, Aunt Viv, Hillary, Will, Carlton, Ashley, Bel Air, February 18th. Starting bid was 50 cents. So let me know if you guys want it. It'll be framed up by Friday, hopefully. You know what I'm saying? It's still on the uh, auction block. Can you add the tab to uh, add the schedule to the community tab? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I got you one journey. Um, Snowfall. Yeah, Snowfall is. It premieres on Wednesdays and Bel Air is on Thursdays. So all my shows are typically be the day after, except for Power. Power would be on Sunday. Well, I watch it on Saturday. So yeah, Sundays. And then everything else would be the day after. Epic just dropped the new show from tonight. Hey, JT, what is that about? I just, let me see. Oh, I literally just sent that to my uh, my nephew. I was like, "Man, what is this from?" Episode two twenty. So I'm gonna check that out. I'm probably definitely gonna be the only person that's watching it. Well, as far as doing it on YouTube. Now, if it's whack, you know, hey, I'll do one or two episodes. Now, it ain't no thing to cut that thing off. You know what I'm saying? Let me see something. What is from about? Hopefully it's good though. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I always like a new movie. I mean, to new TV show, especially from a, a station we ain't heard from. Epic. Let me see. Um, From is an American science fiction horror television series created and written by John Griffin, executive produced by the Russo brothers. The series premiered on Epics today. Yeah, but what is it about? Oh, man, Lost is one of my top five TV shows. So they said it's a the sci-fi horror series is set in a mysterious small town that traps anyone who enters. And that is... Besieged by bloodthirsty monsters. Oh man. If it's too far fetched, then I can't do that for y'all. That's just something I gotta watch. But trying to break down like too much sci-fi kind of uh, kind of makes me upset. That's why you don't see me do superhero movies. I don't really get too far into it. Now, if it was something like sci-fi, you get stuck in the town, you can't leave. All right, cool, but monsters eating each other. But the general feeling of exhaustion and the desperation that hunts its characters might be familiar to those dealing with more down to earth struggles as might be conflicting their views about how to prepare for a future salvation that may never come. If that is you're able to first get past the showness at which all of these ideas unfold in the unevenness of the characters, the dialogue. Oh, I knew. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I've got to figure out how to watch it, though. Epics. I don't even know what Epics comes on. 
Now, what the hell is Epix? Is Epix a TV station? Does anybody know? <laughs> Adamsville said, what kind of soup they got? Look in this diner. They got this diner, but I guarantee they might they primary food isn't the soup of the day. This diner is mm. Man, they probably got soup in here. I ain't going to lie to you. This place ran down. The paint here all dirty. Need to get a power washer out here. But uh-oh. He got he got the outgrown hair of the uh of the cop Bennigan. He got a little miniature fro. So you know he about it. Man, anytime they give a black character or afro like that, man, they be having him on some BS. Like, come on now. If they don't give a black guy a haircut in the show, they they be messing with him, man. Like, come on, look at this dude. Look how he dressed. Now, unless he went back in time. He got this big ass shirt tucked in, this big old belt buckle, the jacket that ain't fitting, and these grandpa jeans. I don't know. And we're gonna try it out. The Godfather Harlem is on that channel. Oh, so it might come on net. I mean, not net, uh, Netflix, Hulu. Let me see if Epis is on Hulu. Cause that's why I watched the Watch Epic Originals, Hulu. Oh, okay. It's Epic's on Hulu. Amazon Prime members. Damn. So it's free on... Oh, no. It's the free trial on Hulu. An extra $2.99? Yep, people. I don't know about that. If I do it, y'all better be watching that video three or four times to cover that $2.99. Nah, I'm just playing with y'all. I'm going to check it out. If it... If I do watch it, y'all got to understand, it's going to be a busy week for me. So if I watch it, these might not come out till Wednesday, even though they drop on Sundays. I try to get y'all the main shows early, but like something like this, since we aren't sold on it yet, it might not drop till Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe. Because I still got to do breakdowns of what I've seen in here, do some research and find out. Cause I got to talk about the, the two new feds. They want me to do a what's next for, for Bel Air. I still got to watch Euphoria, break that down. I got a lot of stuff I got to do, y'all. It's all right. It's all to the bueno. That Pam and Tommy series is whack. What is what is that? Pam and Tom? Tommy series? Uh, JT, no, I didn't do Godfather of Harlem. Uh, I think I was too far behind. I didn't want to have to. How many seasons is it? Is it just two or is it the third season on the way? New for, okay, it's renewed for a third season. Yeah, I didn't. I think the original season was when the season one release. Twenty nineteen, nah. That's that's kind of when I was first doing YouTube, and I was really just doing power back then. So, nah. And then like to have to go back and watch it, mm. I liked it though. But it's the same with Wu Tang. I started late on that, so I couldn't do recaps. I don't want to get too far behind on it. Oh, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee on Hulu. Oh, I I, I didn't even watch that. It, it's it's only so many white shows that I can watch. Don't get me wrong. They have some good ones. But it, it's like, man, at some point, let me get a break. Let me get a break. <laughs> oh, I know it, it might not interest you guys. Watching, uh, Watch Inventing Anna. Now, Anna, uh, she's a girl. She's a rich little. Well, she's not rich. She's a scam artist. But. I first heard about her by watching American Greed. She was basically scamming up in New York trying to get like a $40 million loan. Watch that. I think that's on... Is that Netflix? Therese, uh, watch this. Uh, Inventing Anna. This is a good show, man. I think I'm on like episode six. Yeah, it's on Netflix. So yeah, you know, I like it. I like it. And the little chick from Ozarks is on there. So that's cool, being able to see her.
All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Because you know what time it is. What is it, 9 o'clock? Got to get that last meal in for tonight. Oh, speaking of from Black TV and television. No, they posted an interview with the, the characters. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out for real, for real. Yeah, Bland True. Ruth, she plays Anna. It's actually pretty good. She did she hey. She got that damn accent on there. She's doing a good job with that role. I like it. But definitely, if you're new to the channel and you like these little open forum discussions where we just talk about anything, we talk a little bit of trash, but we all a family here. As long as you keep it respectful in the chat, there's no wrong questions, there's no wrong answers. You know what I'm saying? If I'm wrong, I'll look it up. I don't mind getting on Google and we try to figure some things out. But I'm Moda J. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Tomorrow is Euphoria. I don't know who all watches it. It's a weird show, but it got me hooked. So we got Euphoria tomorrow. Thursday, we got Snowfall. Friday, we got Bel Air. Busy schedule. Uh, One Journey, I got you on that. I'll put it in the community tab. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I got, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to start getting some more stuff for you. I'm going to start dressing up. We're going to do our thing. We're going to get a little. A little more fun over here because I see y'all actually rock with me. But thank y'all for that. Hey, Neek. Neek, all you got to do is call up United. The flight is booked. Soup kitchen is still there. Reservation, everything. You're good to go. You just got to make it happen. <laughs> all right, y'all. Y'all be safe. Oh, don't go to work and be late tomorrow. Just don't go because it's a holiday. <laughs> That's for the people with the federal holidays. If you don't, hey, my bad, man. I wish we could all get those days off. But it is what it is, man. Have fun. Don't drink too much. It's Sunday night. I'm out. Thanks for watching.